and gentlemen, welcome to the Dead Man 2019 summer finale. Now, as you may know, this is the last Dead Man in its current format. So let's take a quick look at the journey Dead Man's had to take to get to this point. Dead Man Mode was first discussed on a Q&A live stream April 16th, 2015. Uh, where effectively you'll have a hardcore PvP world, uh, accounts will only be able to log into this world and get XP in this world. The idea was simple, a high risk, high reward game mode with boosted experience rates and mechanics never seen before in old school. And we quickly found ourselves creating the new game mode. He's a going in my pocket, I appreciate the bank my friend, GG. After its release, the idea to introduce seasons leading up to a broadcasted tournament came up. And we held our first ever tournament on the 26th of March, 2016. This tournament comprised of the top 2,000 ranked players, all being invited to compete in a battle royale style fight, with dangerous fog encroaching until one player was left standing, winning the $10,000 grand prize. Over the many seasons, we've released copious amounts of updates to give the game mode variety and make things more interesting. Got him, KO! There it is. Each tournament has seen impressive commitment from the various clans and teams over the years, as well as the many solo players and content creators. Um, oh yes, we got him! We got, oh my... Resulting in 15 epic tournaments and nearly $350,000 awarded to the winners. Deadman Mode has helped to show what old school RuneScape is capable of if we follow our ambitions, and we're grateful for all it's given us. We released a blog back in April letting you know that Deadman Summer Finals will be the last Deadman in its current format, as Deadman will be on hiatus until we've taken the time to redesign it. This is not us cancelling Deadman, it's an opportunity to go back to the drawing board and take a closer look at what we've learned from the game mode so far, and where we'd like to take it from here. That said, thank you all for being a part of Deadman. We hope you join us in looking forward to what the future holds for the game mode. Welcome guys to the Deadman Summer 2019 finale. I'll be your host, Mod Archie. Join with me are my casters, we've got Aiza, Ben, Howdy. how you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling good, emotional, but good, very excited, yeah. can't wait. Emotionally to... excited, yeah, yeah. Ian, Pure Spam, how you doing? Uh, same as Ben, to be honest, excited to see this un underway, but uh, very nervous and very, you know, sad to be seeing DM going for now. It is a very exciting time for us um, mm -hmm. on this couch, we've been doing this for years. This is the 15th mm -hmm. tournament, Wow. so much has happened. Um, ben, do you want to talk to us a little bit about why we're making this change to, to put Dead Man on a halt? Yeah, so I was kind of like thinking about it in general because there's been a lot of comments from people that have saying like, you know, why, why stop it when it can just carry on even if it's not in its current, you know, tournament setting that we have at the moment. And I was thinking to the very first Dead Man and how it just really first started off as kind of like an open world with mayhem and chaos ensuing throughout the entirety of it. And back then, nothing was known. No one knew about the best training spots, the best places to lock down, uh, the best areas to go to, the best quests to complete and which order to complete them in. So it was always something new that was happening. And whilst there have been some really fantastic changes happening to Dead Man over the course of the many years that it's been running for now, and even to this day, there are still times that we find like new clans finding out different pieces of information and new strategies that they put together. It has started to become a little bit same same. Mm -hmm. it, there's only so many times that you can watch the same thing from a different angle until you realize that it actually is just a repeat of what's already been done. Um, and I was saying to myself, actually, I think it's really good that Jagex have taken that initiative now to kind of like take a step back and have realized that themselves and said, you know what? Deadman deserves more love and attention than it's currently getting. Um, so let's actually stop doing what we're doing, give it a break. Because it's very difficult to kind of like actually completely rework something whilst it's also still being worked on. These tournaments, they take up a lot of your guys' resource and time um, from multiple people as well as the community. So even getting feedback can at times be, be difficult in a, in a high level of quality. So yeah, just taking that step back, redoing it all and then breathing a new life into the game mode. And I for one cannot say how excited I am to see what, what potential changes we're gonna see in the future. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. How Very exhilarating well the first demo mode was compared yeah. to uh, how how same it's gotten, like you just said a minute ago. It's just, I can't wait to experience that mm -hmm. thrill again, that excitement where everyone jumps in, doesn't really know <laughs> what's going on, and uh, all these new metas are being found out as it, as it continues. Yeah, I mean, thinking back to the first ever Dead Man, um, that, that was essentially, we, it wasn't even supposed to be a seasonal or a tournament thing. It was just mm -hmm. a world, and yeah. everybody played it, and then we invited the top 2,000 to compete, and eventually the last person standing after the fog pushed everybody into Falador, it killed everybody. Um, uh, received $10,000. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've made changes every single season. Yep. 
Um, and we've upped the prize pool to $32,000. As we said, I think 15 tournaments, nearly $350,000 given away, which is a fortune. Um, and it's done so much to help build up people in clown, uh, clans, sorry, not clowns. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's been an amazing uh, journey to, the, to get to this point. But yeah, as you were yeah. saying, uh, there's only so much we can do when we go from season to season to season. So we're going to take a step back uh, when I address the rumor that's saying uh, to say this is not the end of Dead Man as it is. It might come back with a different name. It might come back with a different face. But we're going to do a, a bigger and better than ever. We're going to look at what we did well, what we did wrong, what we want to improve on. Um, and I'm really excited to see it come back. Me too. Yeah. So Ian. You were the only one on this couch, actually, that was here at the spring rerun. Can yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. So, yeah, two weeks ago, I was invited back alongside Night and Nata to host and Rakesy, who co-casted with me. Mm -hmm. And um, we did the rerun because in the last tournament, which was the spring finals, I believe, about a couple months ago, and we last casted that one, unfortunately, there was an error when players were moved from the final area of Falador into the one versus one area where they got completely wiped out. So, as a result, they tried to be brought, brought back in, which happened. But um, to try and be fair, Jagex decided to host another rerun of the tournament, which happened two weeks ago, like I just said. And um, they offered the same prize money as well, $32,000, except there wasn't the multi-phase leading up to it. It was just the one versus one, the high adrenaline uh, fights with the VLS and all of that good stuff that we'll get on to talking about a bit later <laughs> on as well, of course. And um, yeah, it was, it was a great show. I believe in the end, Inya, uh, one member of Frontline, won it. And I believe this might be the second, second time he's actually gotten that far or, or taken prize money home. He won 20000 And then in the rerun we had, he came second place, he was destroying everyone right until the end, and then Bellis, one of the PVMers who's recently taken up PK in the last year or two, yeah. uh, representing Blazers, he came down and uh, just showed that you know, there's even another higher skill level above that again, and it was such an intense fight the entire way through. Um, but it, it goes to show as well that this tournament as well, we still don't know who could potentially take it. There's, yeah. there's so many guys out there that are, and, and girls, out there that are kind of like hanging about in the, in the midst and people don't know of them just yet. So Dion does a great job, like you said before, to, uh, to give them a, a platform to, to show their skill sets off and, uh, and really grow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's one of my favorite things about Deadman is, is uncovering the new strategies um, and then helping to build up these communities and these players, as I've said. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to take a minute, just a quick minute in this intro, to appreciate um, all the content creators, particularly this season, but through all Dead Man seasons. I think we can get a clap in the chat for some of the influencers that have been making videos this season. These guys have been playing, what, 12 hour days minimum? 12 probably. hours? That is rookie numbers, Chris. It's <laughs> <And> <laughs> at then, least 20. <laughs> and then as soon as they finish, they're not going to sleep, like you might expect. They're working on their videos. Um, they're, they're, I don't know, strategizing for the next stream. These mm -hmm. guys have been putting in some serious hours and it's made for some great content. Do it. Seven yeah. hours of hardcore Iron Man and my brain's frazzled, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's um, it for me. But yes, so we've talked about the rerun, we've talked about the spring finale. Um, we haven't yet addressed what's happened this week. We've talked about the influencers, but not so much the clans. We've seen the return of Rot, and yeah. we don't have Fools this time. Yeah. No, so the Finnish army, unfortunately uh, for them, they're taking the summer off as they always do, going to you know, spend their prize money on maybe say, they, they a yacht. They won so much, they've got to put it somewhere. Exactly, so, <laughs> so they're, uh, they're enjoying themselves this summer. Um, and last time around, we saw them and Blazers notably holding down Shiloh Village, mm -hmm. um, which was the requirement to do a piety quest. Now this time around, Rot and a huge alliance alongside them uh, decided to hold down Lunar Diplomacy Quest and the island and the boat itself, so to avoid any other clans being able to come there and take over, be able to do things like DS2 for the, uh, the, the Rune Dragons to get your Dragon Crossbow, as well as obviously getting even the Lunar Diplomacy quest done itself, which gives you access to Vengeance, which as we've seen before, the ranged tank meta can, can really be powerful. Um, although last time around we saw a lot of the hybrids, you know, really coming out um, and, and defeating a lot of those tanks, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, it's been pretty, pretty standard for most clans. Um, we'll get onto that in a little bit when we're in the, the permadeath stage and we're talking about like, action in game. And um, we'll have a bit more time to talk about all the clans and such. But uh, there are, to my knowledge, there are two massive alliances right now. 250 to 300 pe people per alliance. Mm -hmm. And you have most of the major clans from DMM and from 07 that have kind of gone into different ones depending on their previous um, affiliations with other clans and, and previous alliances. And uh, overall, you know, it's, it, all these clans, like you said before, Rot's come back. Uh, we've seen CT, SV, um, loads of other clans that don't normally play DMM or not, haven't played every single tournament coming to the midst. So it's, it's going to be really exciting today, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think thinking back to that last rerun in, in particular, mm -hmm. you touched on this for a second there. So that, that Inya guy went on to win the yep. uh, spring finale. Representing and Frontline. And came second, nearly winning a back-to-back -back yeah, first almost, for us, yeah. only to get taken out by a PVMer. I just think that story, <laughs> that story is amazing. Like, well, I, I think, I think Bellis' story in general has been pretty amazing to yeah. have only been in the last 12, 24 months or so focusing on PvP and to have got as far as being able to be a really formidable opponent, especially in Deadman and the 1v1 sections. 
um, yeah, just hats off to them. And I think it just goes to show that it doesn't matter what section of the game that you play. If you play RuneScape, you pretty much can do it all. And um, there's a lot of changes that have been happening to PvP recently, a lot more that are going to be coming up in the near future as well. And, and in, the, in the late future too. So if there was ever a time to try to like, uh, you know, warm up your skills, maybe now. Yeah, that definitely. Time. Um, and another thing on, on that note, actually, is, is Bellis and, and these people who get to the 1v1s, mm -hmm. watching back the videos of these people and their, and their perspectives, they're not shaking. And, and so to play an entire tournament, a seven day long period, grinding for hours and hours every single day, and then get into this tournament where you obviously you have one life. If you die, that's all of that time gone. I mean, that, that's half the nerve, isn't it? Keeping cool, keeping yeah. calm, and uh, I'm not, not shaking. <laughs> 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 like I was the All Stars event. Yeah. Exactly. Always, so you, uh, yeah. you might think you're an incredible PKer, mm -hmm. and maybe you are. But when you're in front of so many thousands of people mm -hmm. with 20 grand on the line, yep. that's where the true skill shows. Uh, definitely. Can, we, can, we, can we like create a new term? You know, there's obviously the Jad hands for those that might not have experienced <laughs> yeah. EVM before. Dead man hands? Dead man hands. Dead okay. Man hands. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so we've talked about the, the spring finale, um, the rerun, and leading up to this point with the week. Um, we haven't really addressed the tournament structure. Ian, do you want to take us through that? Yeah, sure. So um, as with every season, at the end of a season, which is a one month long season, the top 2,000 players from the high schools are taken and then invited back two months later into this tournament, which is a brand new server. Everyone starts from level three, tutorial island. You've got the standard grinds, except obviously in demo mode, XP rates are increased, uh, drop rates are also increased. Um, and they've got a week long straight on this one world to try and get whatever gear they can, whatever stats they can, which is why, like we said before, everyone sweats out for 20 plus hours a day. It's crazy. Um, and then leading up to the point we are right now, where the permadeath stage begins, where slowly fog is released and pushes these teams and clans and solo players into one of two areas, either Falador or Anakal. And uh, once there, they have to fight it out until there are 128 players in each of the areas, 256 total, to be taken through to the one versus one stage. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really exciting to see. Um, the 1v1s is where all the magic happens. Um, before that, we have a few clan fights, like I talked about before a little bit. We've got the two massive solo alliances going at it. So I'm interested to see how they, they play, strategize together, yeah. and they give themselves the best chance of being teleported into that one versus one, where they get a, a chance at the prize money. Yeah, very well put. And, and these clans, they, they help to, to feed certain individuals and their teams, yeah. don't they? So. so yeah, I've got a bunch of information in notes over here, thanks to all the clans that reached out and uh, gave me a little bit of information about themselves. Yeah. I always appreciate that. So we're going more into depth about that and which, which team members have been fed. Hopefully, the 1v1s, we can point them out a little bit easier than we usually do um, but yeah I mean it's gonna be such a good spectacle there there's so many massive names like I keep talking about I, I'm so generally excited <laughs> about this. I really, there, there, I'm there really, really have been so many people like in, in, in terms of content creators mm -hmm. aside from just game players actually it's the the directory has been popping off with streamers people that are you know top five top ten that have, you've probably never even seen streaming the game before and they've been doing some fantastic content yeah, I think I saw Spark Max we had earlier actually he said that before we had even gone live and that the final had begun um, that there were about almost 20,000 people just waiting on the directory for this final to occur. So it's yeah. such a big build-up this whole week yeah. where people see like a whole, what takes people years in the main game because of the in increased experience rates, it takes people a week to get max stats basically. And yeah. there's a lot of people that are maxed in this tournament. So uh, a lot of content in a very short amount of time all leading up to this one exciting moment. Well, it's the last one. You may as well yeah. go out for a, uh, with a bang. Mm -hmm. um, just one thing that I don't think we touched on in when we were talking about the structure was actually about prize money itself and, mm -hmm. uh, and how much players can expect to actually get here. So if you're, if you're looking at walking away from the demo mode in first place, you'd be taking home $20,000. Uh, and then you have second place, which is $10,000. Third and fourth place both take home $1,000. And then the top 16 players get 12 months of membership as well. Not bad. So yeah, it's pretty good for a, a week's worth of uh, playing the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like I mentioned earlier as well, the Fools, for example, the Finnish clan, they usually put that money together yeah. to, uh, to go off and um, have cruises or, or you know enjoy themselves. I think Blazers are also with their prize money. They recently won with Bellis winning last time. Yep. I spoke to them briefly and they said they were going to go to um, somewhere in America, I think Florida actually. They've booked out like a massive mansion for all the <laughs> team members to, to go out to and spend a holiday together. So it's really cool when clans do that. It's a great well. story. It's yeah. something you'd love to follow behind the scenes if mm -hmm. you could really. Yeah. Um, there's, and, a, there's a lot of that in Deadman in general, though, isn't there? We've, we've seen a lot of clans now that are formed purely just because of Deadman, a lot of friendships that have been made. Yeah. Alliances between clans that typically would never have spoken before as well are now super close and um, it's just been fantastic to see the whole of that just evolve and develop as, as the game mode has also progressed. The, the community of, of Deadman mode and like how many people know each other for so many years now and all these alliances and, and teams that they formed is just, it's honestly so spectacular. The, just friendships in general, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's awesome. Huh? And today, um, actually in just about a minute, is mm -hmm. when we find out whether those teams can hold. When you mix teams of such yep. large quantities who maybe didn't like each other at a time but now have a combined goal of winning the Deadman tournament, mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see if there's any backstabbing, spying, as we've, we've known this yeah. to happen. What's going to happen this tournament? Um, well, we'll find out in just a minute as I'm going to leave and I'm going to leave you guys to, to take away the Deadman Summer 2019 finale. As always, thank you, Chris. We really look forward to it and uh, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, let's jump right into it.
Wow. <laughs> <The> direction, <laughs> straight away. That was a close-up and a half, wasn't it? A bit of an intimidating <laughs> look. Almost, man. Like, what what why don't we get a zoom in on the, the poor old uh, dragon killer there looking Wait, dude? Is that guy in full gilded? Uh, no, what? He's got followers. My, my eyes are just looking at the, the bald oh. chap with the bot look. And is, is that Ridden Wait, who's no, there? So how has he got full gilded? That's like so rare from police. Oh, they've got the new drop table. They're on, they're on the global drop say, table. I was like, no, there's no way. How many, how many dead men have you uh, talked about again, Ian? I know, right? Yeah, OK. We're jumping right into it. And as you can see right now, now, this is the lead up whether the fog is slowly going to get released and push players into a certain area. As you can see, it's popping up right now. I uh, believe Resist the Kill, kill loose himself from a chest, the Verox Plate Skirt and the Abyssal Wave. Do you want to talk us through briefly the, uh, the chest information and, and what happens there? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we, we thought about a long time ago in Dead Man, it was, I, I'm not going to try and tell you how many because I'll just be wrong, <laughs> but there was a point where we thought that this section of the, of the Dead Man uh, build up, the permadeath stage, was, was feeling a little bit stale and we thought we'd add in a little of an incentive for people to go to particular areas so there are six chests in total that essentially drop down at specified points on the map at specific times yep. and they're all in like multi locations and they ho they hold some pretty valuable um, pieces of, of gear so you saw there that first chest actually landed in Lumbridge and contained a varic skirt and a whip so if you're able to get hold of that that whip is yeah. it costs a fair bit in dead man because the only way you get hold of it obviously is is, is through um, slayer or getting really lucky with the global it's, drop table it's very much a risk versus reward aspect of the game where yeah. like is it worthwhile you leaving your clan and leaving your alliance or leaving the direction you're going to um, to try and pick yourself a potential item that can change the, the 1v1 stage for you. Yeah, um, I mean, potential items, a Dragonfire Shield, Infernal Yeah, our DFS Cape, is huge. Huge items. barely any of them in the game right now. Um, we'll probably get some stats of exactly what items are in the game sometime a little bit later. Um, but just to touch again on the, uh, the main info regarding the... Uh, actually, no, we're at the heat map. Do you want to explain what's going on here as well, Ben? Yeah, so this is a fantastic tool that was developed by Jagex, which allows us to actually see where the most populated areas in the game are. So these, the bigger the circle, the more the players, okay? Yeah. If you see more colour, that's because there's a lot more people and there. And that can let and, me um, get on to the, uh, the exact, exact, what we're actually seeing here, which are the two alliances mainly, which is the, uh, the Rot Alliance, I'm going to call them, which is about 250 to 300 people. We have clans like Rot, Cutthroat, uh, CT that is, DL, which is uh, Divine Legion, Tartar, World 45 clan, SV as well, one of the other 07 clans. I haven't played much DMM before. We have the Lit Alliance, another big name that we've seen many tournaments now. Uh, Lit, Frontline, Overtake, CD, CL, and GG as well, of course. There are a few other smaller clans in the midst as well. Apologies if I didn't catch any of your names out there. Um, but They're both about 250 to 300 people total. Yeah, So we're for looking each at a 50 50 fight here. It's, it's then down to skill. Isn't it's then it? down to skill. Oh, we're talking about skill here. We've got a pretty important fight here between this <laughs> mystic monk and a, a, a lonely nub. Um, oh quite gosh. literally, with a heron pet, uh, unfortunately not going to be able to transfer getting to the main heron, game. Getting a pet on that game mode after a week of just grinding There's, there's, out there's a few people stuff. here that are quite clearly there as easy pickings with bone crossbows and uh, not the best gear. However, here looks like a, uh, a full mystic warrior is about to be taken out. It's John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> Great levels of imagination with RuneScape names, that's for sure. Hopefully we're not going to see any ones that are, uh, you know, a little bit... Um, should be hidden. Yeah, offensive. That's a great term. Thank you for saving me, as always. It's, it's great to see as well that we have, do have some of these hybrids that are, you know, confident enough to go outside of their, their teams and, and go out there and have some fun. Because obviously, the past week, they've uh -huh. spent just grinding out non-stop. They, they want to go out there and, like, you know, actually take part in some PvP as well. It's very hard during the week because there's so many teams out and people running around in max gear. So um, it's the last one. He wants to have some fun, this guy, and get, rack up a few kills while he still can and take down some of the competition. And this is one of the things I was touching on in the beginning that I really appreciate from the content creator's perspective, mm -hmm. is it's very easy, or not easy, but it is perhaps perhaps smarter even, to play a dead man tournament hiding somewhere in the shadows, uh, building up your account, getting everything ready, then getting into the 1v1s if you can. But we've got some people who are just having fun, they're enjoying the tournament, whether they're creating content or not, this guy is just having fun. He might not get this kill, but he is having the time of his life, and that's all that matters. Unless yeah. he's running into multi right well, I mean, dare. The other thing is as well is that it might potentially be someone who was actually hoarding quite a lot of items that he could have actually used to benefit him if he was feeling a little bit, you know, lacking in terms of yeah. gear or supplies. Every kill that you have that you get is a, is a chance of obviously getting an upgrade. Um, one of the things to point on is if, the, if you're familiar with Deadman mode, you'll know that like typically um, the major cities are considered safe zones. And if you, you're actually not able to attack anyone in those zones, and if you enter them whilst you're schooled, you get attacked by the guards. When we enter the permadeath stage, all of those safe zones throughout the entire game are removed. So now the entire world is open to PvP. So if you are seeing people fight within Varak or Falador or even Lumbridge, um, that's just actually because that, that little section of the, the game has been removed for the, for the purpose of actually getting through this stage now. It allows people to basically roam freely and, uh, and not have to worry about any accidental deaths. 
Looking at the heat map here now, we can obviously see a lot of those teams that before, when we're looking towards uh, East Varak Wilderness, the three clumps were there. We've actually got one of the larger circles now already heading straight up north towards their, uh, their safe spot near towards Anakal. So currently sitting just by the lava maze, we have quite a huge amount of people actually that are uh, idling around um, Falador and the surrounding area. Some people near Draenor. That seems like a pretty formidable force already. And this is the great way for you to kind of like as, as a viewer, if you're looking at home now, and, you, and if you're going to be hearing us, especially Ian, when he's almost rapping through all of the different clan <laughs> names excited, right? <laughs> and the action that's going on, almost consider that each one of these circles, if it's a big circle, that means that it's a lot of clans together. A smaller circle, you'll probably find that that's like a, a group of solo players that have decided to come together and, and group up as one formation. Yep, and just there you saw another chest was, uh, was taken by a member just south of Falador, I believe. Um, I believe it was a Carol's leather top and an Aram's robe skirt, can't make me wrong. It's like a Carol's skirt and an Aram's skirt. Oh, even, okay, well, best uh, tank top in the game, apart from Armadale, of course, if you're, you know, uh, brave enough to oh. go out there and the God Wars done. And, which we have and how have we heard? Some people have yes. been brave and some people have been very well rewarded too. Let's, let's hold on to those stats for just a second. Uh, yeah, I just course. want to touch on something as we noticed in the heat map. These massive groups of clans moving forwards um, towards their destinations. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do is, is obviously split them into two separate areas. We've got Falador and we've got Anakar. Yep. But we also give people a random destination to whichever one they go to. We split things up evenly. So yeah. if you're in a clan with 100 people, you'll probably have 50 of those people divided into one of the other safe zones. Mm -hmm. This is to help out with solo players a little bit more and the smaller teams. And, and it makes it really interesting in terms of like defending and attacking perspectives. Um, you never know what to expect. It's not just a, a straight, you know, this, this clan versus this clan or this team versus this team. Yep. You don't know exactly who's going to be there in which areas either, which makes it quite interesting. Um, a lot of the, the clans don't decide, you know, straight to the area. Some do. Some, some feel, you know, strong enough to defend. Like last time around, we saw um, Blazers and Fools taking Anakal and defending it just so with such ease. They just they stayed there, didn't let anyone in, and they, that's why they made it through with so many players to the 1v1 and why they were able to take the win eventually. Mm. The sheer um, amount of people in this <coughs> unit here is insane. There's just so many people clumped up at this spot now. Uh, this is just uh, fairly deep in the wilderness, Moss Giant location, just near where the uh, the Black Chin Chompers are. If you're a, uh, if you're known to skill in that area, you've probably been PK'd a few times. Um, but yeah, one of the one of the interesting things that happens with this permadeath stage, as Archie was mentioning, that the players get split out evenly between the two locations, is that you'll find that half of your team, maybe a third of your team that you were expecting to be with you no longer are, but you're all probably using the same voice channels. So it becomes very difficult to coordinate uh, between where players should be moving to, who they should be hitting off at one point in terms of the most damage, because they obviously want to make sure they take them down as fast as possible. So they're going to want to focus fire particular people, but at the same time, they're going to need to be talking about the other clans that are trying to do the same to them. And we'll probably see, especially in this safe zone now, which the actual final safe zone is marked by the insides of these glowing orbs. So there's a huge square around Valador statue at the moment, and you can already see a clan in the corner here taking formation later on it's going to be a bit of a game of cat and mouse they're going to be going around in a circle as one clan moves into the other the other clan's then going to move around until they pick off people that, that are a little bit slow the stragglers they'll start to dwindle down and and then when the team is about a good enough size so that they feel confident enough to push we'll probably just see mass carnage ensue and then both or three teams potentially will go in and, and completely massacre that, that guy in the, in the uh the black full helmet full black di dog and cross so he's played the whole week been grinding <laughs> out and he just waits there a falador and that whole team just <laughs> Chance. Him pretty much. Bless him. I think so. this chest here is probably one of the most valuable, um, aside from the Dragonfire Shield, if you're looking for your, those melee hits, if anyone's going to be you know, taking those chances, you're going to be looking at getting an Infernal Cape and a Fury, I believe. I think Varrock is actually... Oh, no, this is uh, Varrock. Yeah, and yeah. The yeah I, can't, I, can't, I can't read or see, apparently. <laughs> so. So, um, so a couple of quick things, guys. Um, real quick, we have less than 900 players remaining, so things are moving very smoothly. It's nice to see the combat early on. We appreciate that. And then, Ian, I wanted to ask you a little bit about an average player's journey, because you actually, while you, while you cast these, you do tend to play a lot of dead man tournaments yeah. when you can. Um, so if I'm an average player, let's say I can maybe log four hours a day, what is my typical gear setup going to look like come a dead man finale? Four hours a day. I mean, you might as well just log out right then and then, man. You've got you to be able to put the time in for the entire week. It's a tournament, for crying out loud, for $32,000, might I add. Um, well, t to be honest, um, when I usually play, when I have played in the past, I've been with a team, so I've been enjoying myself, um, going out to like PvP, trying to lock down certain areas, such as the Shiloh cave, actually I was a part of that force. Uh, any second, I actually have the, uh, the chest dropping right here, and uh, just touch on this part as well, this is probably what I'd be doing if I'd been playing four hours a day. I'd be one of these guys that's get up in a little bit of loot, Hope gonna, try something and, good. gonna try and get something and run back to the clan and give it to one of my, my stronger members to, to oh, I'm feed I'm a solo them player. I, I'm, an, I'm a four hours a day average <laughs> solo player. Help me out. I, I do uh, think it's I like, mean. without having the experience of playing in the tournaments myself, 
stuff. I do think it's uh, it's possible to, to get geared at this point because obviously at the moment everyone's frantically trying to get together with their teams. Maybe people. Oh, we saw an AGS though, 391. An AGS as well in the game right now. It's gonna be interesting if we sit in the one v ones. But also you've got the opportunity if you've been playing four hours a day, you are running around and picking up scraps. Get whatever loot is on the floor. I think <laughs> is your best bet. Okay. Um, but for for that kind of play, which you, you could consider to be you know relatively casual in the grand scheme of things. You probably would have been better off playing in the season all for fun. Yeah. And with four hours a day in but the season, you could perfectly well be in a position to be at the similar level of what these guys yeah. now are in the Th tournament. There are a lot of guys that play semi actively. Oh, here we go. The chest is coming up right now. Let's see who grabs this item. It's a big one. And it looks like Admiral's there got he is. it. He's going south. If we can follow him, we can see him. Was. is that him? Oh, That's it's actually him. him. 85 is. combat. What an absolute waste. He is definitely going to be able to use that in final. <laughs> but potential, to be honest. Well, this is what four I mean, hours a day gets you. Full black dragon yeah. high, some rune, and 85 combat. And straight off the bat, these guys are going straight for him. I don't know if they actually get the uh, the imbued part of the ring as well when it drops the floor. I, I don't think they do, unless it's um, they've, they've changed that since, since before. But well, uh, there's uh, rings. Dragonfire shields, I should say. Uh, we don't Still pick charged. those up empty. You pick them up charged. You do. They imbue them. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, maybe. If he gets the imbue, it's definitely worth trying get this guy and uh, you do not get the beauty you do not get the imbued apparently Ben is shaking his head saying no you don't get the item okay well, in which case still the seers ring is huge um, obviously we talked about briefly earlier rot holding down the lunar diplomacy book uh, spell and um, with that you can teleport to Waterbirth Island so they've been camping not just the lunars but also Waterbirth so the access to DKs yep. so not many clans have been able to actually you know utilize them and grab those rings that you need you know the berserker ring for those extra max hits or or the seers ring which is huge for magic accuracy because it can be so hard to catch freezes on the guys of Armadillon um, and it looks like like right now, this man in his third age Oh, there he goes. Two, two decent hits, and he's, he's out of there. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that home. But I mean, even without the air being on it, it's still a nice plus six, I believe, for the Sears ring, which, uh, which is definitely plus helpful. Plus four? Yeah. Oh, it's plus four now. I don't know. Really? It's plus four on, on unimbued. Yeah. Yeah. Did I really just say plus six? <laughs> Plus four. That's right. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I mean, not many clans were able to actually go to uh, to get those rings. So having one of those right now is uh, is pretty huge. I spoke briefly to to GG, who uh, were able to uh, to go to DKs a little bit, but not as much as they, they thought they were able to. I want to talk to a little bit more about the clans if I'm able to mm -hmm. before we get into the one v one area. So uh, one of the clans is GG, who. Uh, this is their second tournament as a proper clan, quotation marks, proper clan. They've played for many clans before um, as a solo alliance, um, but now in the last couple of tournaments they've, uh, they've you know, worked much more um, uniquely to other clans and um, they went for Sara kills. Went down to Gora's Dungeon, got 1,000 Sara kills as a unit. <laughs> they got, I think, four ACBs, seven SGSs, 15 Sara swords. Um, 10 at Sara Lights, unfortunately. Um, they had no Lunas, but they, um, they still managed to get DS2 um, Bolts, apparently, from some other teams as well. They have a few members, not going to name any names just yet, but from one of the previous tournaments, Krub Emoji, we saw in the rerun. He got top four, I believe, um, which is one of the first times GG's gotten that far. And these guys, like I said before, um, they've been around for, for a while, and their, their best moments in a group is just, you know, as solo players, coming together to form a team with a totally unique experience, because they're all from DMM. A lot of these other clans <laughs> from 07, and they have history, but these guys just come together because they just, just love the game mode, basically. I think it's one of the main clans that we touched on before that have formed just purely around yeah. de Deadman mode in general and now stuck together. And do they have any intentions to carry on past Deadman? Um, so yeah, they're gonna they're gonna play, um, I believe, 07 after this and wait until DMMT comes back again. Okay. Um, they're very different to a lot of the other clans where you know obviously there's a lot of trash talking gets involved and uh, it's a very competitive atmosphere. But GG like to you know relax apparently and um, they they have a zero tolerance for that kind of stuff as well. They're one of the newer clans, and mm -hmm. um, I believe Skill Specs was playing with them. So we have, me. we've got loads of content creators with them, actually. We have uh, Sk uh, Skill Specs who joined them. We have C Engineer. We have Spark Mac with the tribe. We have Sick Nerd, who's joined them for the final hour. He's got his own, and all his own stuff by himself. Torbestra as well, actually. Oh, okay. Another huge content creator who's joining GG. And uh, Kemp Q as well, who's joined right for the final hour just to make sure that he's got a better chance to get into those 1v1s through right. the multi-phase. And these guys are part of that massive lit alliance that I was talking about briefly uh, before. And the reason for that is they hate one of the other teams in another, in another alliance, which is Tartar. Right. They used to be in an alliance with them a long time ago, but they got backstabbed and they were fed up of it. And all the mean talking and clan chats, they're out there today to, you know, to try and get the <laughs> revenge. And uh, once again, you know, try and get one of their members through. They've geared up a couple of people with some, uh, some insane gear as well. Um, which is awesome and so, uh, just real quick yeah. I was talking about this a little bit earlier um, with these clans with these hundreds of people in their in their team they tend to find a, a few people maybe is it three or five in 
How, how many people would you say you, you yeah, would feed if you're um, a fan of a hundred? Well, I mean, it, if I'm kind of a hundred, I'd say yeah, around three to five people that okay. give up, you know, max gear, and that's that's what they're all doing the whole way through. They've got certain members that you know have this kind of guideline, like go do smithing for us, go get us our rune crossbows, go do crafting, so you make everyone black dehyde sets. And you mentioned before how well, if I can only play four hours a day, well, those are the times where you do join a clan because then you know you're you're helping in such a, a way that is is needed for the clan, even if you're yeah. only a few hours a day, that they need that, you know, that extra help. So, but if these guys who get fed get taken out, if their names get leaked by mm -hmm. anybody in the team they get taken out somebody else immediately gets all of their things I'm, I'm being very careful not to leak any of their names <laughs> just yet but I think um, there's, a, there's a common tactic at the moment there isn't there where they typically players will have their absolute very best gear if they plan to go into the 1v1s kept in the bank because yeah. you get to you get to a chance when you hit that 1v1 stage to resupply take everything out that you want mm -hmm. and then that's when they'll bring out their gear so if they do fall They'll lose what they're wearing, but they yep. maybe won't give away, for example, those special attack weapons, which you just don't need in this multi section. Exactly. Oh, we've just had a chest drop, actually. This one being the Carol's Leather Top and Aaron's Robe Top, which went to. Uh, are you. I, I've. I think. I, I can't really. It's definitely a backwards name. Yeah. I couldn't read it. It was too, it was too fast. All right. Well, congratulations to that player. Um, we've got some stats on the screen, Ben. Can you, can you see any of those? I can, I, can, I, I, can see, I can see some players' names. All right. <laughs> but I'm not going to read them out because I don't want to leak anyone's actual names just that's, yet. That's a fair point, to be honest. Yeah. But um, there, was a, there, was, there was a few big a big names in here, for example, Dita Bitter. Uh, we've got Abdullah. We also have Nanked, I can see in there. Um, also, I believe we were looking at Sick Nerd Boti as well. Yeah. And so we were aware of the accounts that they're playing on. We'll be following them throughout the tournament. I would appreciate updates on these guys um, trying to figure out who, who was in these, these massive clumps of people, particularly the Gilded guy. But very shortly... Well, there's another one right there. Yeah. Two, two full gilded people. Very shortly, we're mov moving into the uh, the fog, pushing these players into the Falador and then Anacarl areas, which means players will start dying. We still have a 850 players remaining. So people are dying, but a little bit more slowly right now. Um, yeah. People are starting to appreciate this is the last dead Yeah, if, if you compare this format. one directly to the spring finals, we were, we were sitting around about a similar number until probably three to five minutes from now and then suddenly for whatever reason the clans decided that was the perfect time for them to all join in and attack and you just look at the swarms of players here i think the difference being as you mentioned rightly so this is the last dead man tournament as we know it um so people are going to be carried making sure that they are doing the best that they can because their names are going to go down in history. Yeah, everyone yeah. remembers the last one, don't they? And I exactly. Believe, you know, whoever wins this tournament doesn't just have the uh, the thirty-two thousand dollars potentially to uh, to gain from it, but also you know, to say, you know, this is the last demo mode. Yep. We are now under Fina. We took all yeah. the other clans, clans over, which is, I think, why Rot has uh, decided to you know come out again and play. Mm -hmm. For many tournaments, Rot, the, the big bad guys, a lot of people talk about. Uh, many tournaments ago, they won. You know, it took each one by storm and one by a landslide but then other clans started to catch on as well and they seemed like less of a threat they were still playing never really contacted people about it tried to keep on the down low uh, pride at stake of course and uh, all the PKing egos and such from many clans but um Recently, this time round, they have come back. Like I said briefly earlier, they decided to form a huge alliance as well. So we should be able to see some ROT players in here. I didn't get very much information from ROT because, uh, like I said before, they're very secret about it and they, they don't really trust anyone with anything. So uh, the few things that I've, I've had from them is that um, because, obviously, the other clans locked down Shadow last time, gave them an idea of locking down Lunar Diplomacy as well, like I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. which has given them a huge advantage in terms of their alliance. It's such it has a lots of vengeance, yeah. vengeance tanks, which is a, is a really powerful build. Um, and it's their first official one, like I said, for a few, uh, a few times. Their biggest fear, the only information they gave me was their biggest fear, which is the front page of Reddit. So uh, maybe that's going to happen still, who knows? And uh, one of the top PK is being fed. Okay, we got him in a few names, but the one that was most notable was uh, Rot Salad, who still plays today. Okay. And in the, in the old okay. DMMs, you saw him running around and, and killing all the content creators and being an absolute behemoth of a beast. So uh, that should be pretty cool to see uh, how far they get to. All right, well, we're still watching this clan. This clan here is moving up to Anna Carl. And they're not looking to get into any uh, conflict here. We've got actually two massive groups. This group here might be moving up towards them if they are making their way to Anna Carl. Um, we don't know how much time they have left to get there, but they are going to have to cross that border. You can see that team covering the gap between the two um, points of lava. Yeah, I, I, I would probably say that these guys definitely aren't the same team. I see right here one of these teams, something around singles now, obviously, and really importantly as well. 
Um, it's, it's, it's important to know exactly where the single lines are, the multi lines. What I mean by that is there are certain squares and certain areas in RuneScape in the wilderness as well whereby it's 1v1 content and it's multi content. So if you have a team that's sitting around in singles waiting around uh, before, you know, having that final push, mm -hmm. you're less likely to be, you know, uh, sniped by another team or caught out of position. And, and those positioning and, that, and those, those traits and, and those strategies that they've come up with over many tournaments and, and many years even playing 07 as well is what really gives people an edge in these, uh, these multi-fights. But right now, looking at Falador again, we have one clan to the southwest defending the, car, the, the, the knight, I believe. And uh, it looks like they're actually, again, like I said before, in single-way combat. So they're, they're pretty safe over there up until they're, they're forced to move out by the fog. Um, we have a few other large forces to the east as well, um, and they're going to be moving in very soon as well. I'm not too sure which team it belongs to which yet. But we still have a few stragglers as well, all, all clan scouts that are looking around, looking mm -hmm. for those chests to spawn up. So they're able to, uh, to get those really powerful items. And I believe this one right here um, is going to be the Dragonfire Shield, potentially. Well, we've already seen the Carol's Body and the Arm's Body, so this one does look like the Dragonfire uh, Shield at Graveyard of Shadows. Yep, yep it Which is. is a huge item, especially coming into those uh, final 1v1 sections. The, yeah. the defense of it is just incredible. Also, the melee strength really helps if you're going to go in for that hybrid build. It's, it's definitely a best in slot for tank gear. Absolutely. And, um, whatever gear build you are, you need it. And this guy here running away. Oh, my God. He actually managed to get some good distance <laughs> here. He's got two ran bolters behind him. He doesn't have so many direct defense but look, looking at it. But that guy there, really smartly with the Carol's Coif, he has the Morrigan's throwing axes. Using the special attack, actually drains your opponent's energy. Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay, he just ran into the... You're for fog, didn't fog. Oh, you just oh, got someone else oh, killed, though. Oh. Two people. <gasps> Three people. What are you doing? Can Run. Anyone, can anyone even get that DFS now? Or is it gone in, in, the, uh, in the fog? The fog is taken. What a it. brilliant tactic. And wow. Wow. Dear, oh dear. If I can't have it, nobody can. I think we saw that last time. Silly mistake of well, those actually. players to run in and follow them. You know, that's not the first time it's happened. Last tournament, we had the exact same thing. Yep. Where uh, people the ran away. as well. Yeah, yep. and, he, uh, and he managed to get like Back four or spring. five people killed that were following in after him, which is just <laughs> magnificent to see. Dear, oh dear. Actually, do you know what? I just want to, I'm going to give you a, a random, really quick, easy quiz, okay? Mm. Can either of you two guess which is the most common item currently in Dead Man Mode Tournament? Oh. oh. Most common oh. item? How many, the, yeah, there's the, the most count. Shooters. No, it's going to be like a bolt or a rune. Oh, yeah. According to this list, I probably should have said, because it might not be, it be according like to a water the entire rune? game. You've got one guess, quick, go. Okay, water rune. Water rune, okay. It's, it's a water rune? No, no, it's on this list, so the runes oh, aren't on this list, so oh. Chris is wrong. Tuna. No, black chin jumpers. Wait, the most really? in the final Two hundred seventy thousand right of them currently. <gasps> Two hundred seventy. Who needs yeah. that many chins? Well, everyone does for this section. Do you not wait? Wait a few minutes, 000. Archie, and you will see those chins go flying. How you will long see would all it of them. them to catch? Oh, I guess they've had a week to well, do it. Well, it wasn't one fair. person. Ian? Well, there's only one spot, isn't there? Well, a couple <laughs> spots there. But there's only one world. So that means whichever clan locked down the area. But I guess True. they might be on different rotors, like yeah. Sharing, so there are, there are like two main sections where they yeah. can farm them in the uh, in the wilderness there. So yeah, quite a lot. Do you want to touch on why the Black chin chompers are so important. For yeah, absolutely. So we'll be seeing in, in in the sections leading up to this where everyone's confined into that that actual final safe zone, which I mentioned earlier, which is indicated by the glowing orbs on the floor. Well, that's a multi combat zone, and chin chompers are a multi combat ranged weapon. Um, it's actually quite brutal. You throw this cute little creature, it explodes, <laughs> and upon exploding, it damages all players in a radius a certain amount of tiles around where it had originally hit. Yep. So they're really fantastic for, for actually just completely mowing down large groups of enemies. The similar spell, the similar, a similar thing that you'll also see is a spell called Ice Barrage. It's one of the, uh, the it's the highest level spell from the, um, the ancient magics that people will be utilizing in this tournament most likely. Blood Barrage as well. Because yeah, Blood Barrage. Yeah. Ice Barrage, it's got a great ability of being able to AOE damage players with, um, with magic, but it also freezes them in place for 20 seconds regardless of them using protection prayers, unlike the much weaker versions of Entangle and Snare and, and the such like. And then, as Archie mentioned, also Blood Barrage, which is like this big red spell that will appear. That deals AoE damage again, but it doesn't freeze players. It actually heals the, the, the user who casted the spell a certain portion of the damage that they actually end up dealing. So if you can imagine, you're hitting eight people with one spell, you basically get into full HP every time that that hits. So it's really useful for yeah. conserving yeah. food and supplies and making sure that you can survive for as long as possible when... This section really is about outla outlasting all of the others and making sure you're not that straggler. Because if you yep. are lacking supplies, the clans are probably going to tell you to start 
to start tailing off from the main group as a distraction and hoping to slow down the other groups so that they can catch other people off guard too. Yeah, and uh, the skill really comes in with these multi-fights. Of course, a lot of people will be like, oh, multi-fights, that's not you just, you just left click and you just wait and everyone's like piles different people. There's a lot of skill that comes into it. As you can see here, these guys are making a, a long line to make sure their, their members are spread out because if you get caught in these clumps by oh. these chin chompers, by these oh, barrages, by these AOE damaged spells and, uh, and effects, then you're going to get get full like flies in seconds. It's really important to be able to wrap around and to uh, to move as a whole unit. Yeah. And it's like it's like a good comparison is like an ant kind of colony. You know how they all like move together and work <laughs> together. It's, it's a bit like that in Malt, isn't it? That's really a, a really terrible example. Uh, no, I, I think we talked about ants earlier outside. So <laughs> <laughs> came to me. At, the, at the end of the day, a, a single player is, is obviously going to be weaker than an yeah. entire unit. You know, you wouldn't send one man in mm -hmm. into, into a into a, a, a war because you'd want to yeah. send in you know bigger numbers. So when you're warring, one of the one of the most important things is having um, integral callers, people who yep. can call the shots. So you meet everybody else in TeamSpeak <laughs> or Discord. Um, that's not me, by the way. <laughs> What's that? That's not me. Oh, you're not sure. a caller. No, okay. I wouldn't no, be. I probably wouldn't be either. I'm or and a listener. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> right. And then you call the shots. So you tell everybody to move north, and they all do, and you can watch, and it's actually quite beautiful. And then they throw their chins, they cast their barrages, whatever they need to do. But yeah. if that caller dies, mm -hmm. if that caller gets leaked and then sniped, yeah. you're down to the next caller. If you haven't got a next caller and so forth, your team's pretty much done. The thing is, these alliances, they have, like, you know, <laughs> several teams as I said before very briefly we had like the lit GGOT frontline one um, and we had the rot one as well of CT um, execution Tartar SV um, there, there's, there's some there's some huge alliances out there so to be in team speak with all these people we even have like a Swedish client in here as well obviously the fools aren't playing team Sweden Swedish only that's what I can really get out of them the language barrel was a little bit difficult to find some mention <laughs> unfortunately they have five people fully max geared and six VLS's wow. unless that's propaganda they're feeding me but um, so, so, you know, to be in Discord with all these different people that you don't, you don't really know that well, you've come together for this alliance, give you the, so yourselves the best chance against the one versus one finale. Yeah. Um, you've got different people that are calling for you, different leaders, and you've got to just kind of, you know, just trust them and put your faith in them. They're going to tell you, lead your team into victory. And um, there's a lot of spies going on as well, of course, to try and leak enemy locations and enemy tactics and such. It's always going to be changing on the fly. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really riveting. Could you get rewarded, I wonder, if you spy for a clan oh, and bring that information back oh, to yeah, the Oh, they, yeah, they definitely pay. They pay good yeah. money, too. <laughs> <laughs> you have experience with the scene? Uh, not as a spy, first uh, of course, hand. Of course, of course. <laughs> but, um, right. yeah. Oh, not as a spy, but as a supplier of spies. So, <laughs> guys, with the fog moving in quickly, um, we can see players moving very, very slowly into their final mm -hmm. destinations. I'd like to see if we can see the heat map once again. Um, so there we have it. We have four massive clumps that will need to make their way to Anacar. One team is already there, one to the east, one southeast, and the smaller team we just saw was actually northwest. Mm -hmm. And that team looked huge, and that's making just such a small little oh, circle yeah. on the map. Yeah. And I think we'll see in a few moments, like, the, I think one of the, it's really difficult because it's, it's, it's a dangerous game as to, you know, are you going to get the advantage of, of defending? Absolutely if one team comes in at a time. But what happens if all three of those teams that are surrounding Anakal at the moment surround the one team who is left inside? It's very difficult for them to be able to then coordinate who they're meant to be attacking. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this pans down. Because there's no shadow of a doubt that if that smaller team that is currently northwest of Anakal actually enters before the rest yep. of them start coming through, they are going to get wiped out. Because look at the difference in numbers. Well, they might be alliance as well. You're not yep. too sure about that one yet. But just to point out something real quick, this this massive team that's holding down Anacarl, they have no skulls. They have been walking there and just sitting. Mm -hmm. While this team, the smaller Northwest team, might have lost some numbers. They've been enjoying themselves. They've been killing people. It looks like the smaller Northwest team is alliance with the, the Eastern team. But it looks like as well, we've got a few BSs, backstabbers, or spies, Ooh. like we talked about briefly before, who are trying to take down a few members. Or they're just misclicking with their fat fingers. <laughs> they're quite tired from being up all week. <laughs> that could probably be there. The well, I mean, well. The, w the weather as well across the entirety of Europe right now is extremely <laughs> hot. So I wouldn't be surprised if those mice are slipping out of yeah. their hands. Um, so, yeah, so North, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, Northwest, um, one of the clans I've not actually talked about very much who won the last rerun, Bellis we spoke about briefly, was Blazers. And they usually team up with, with Fools, but since Fools are taking the summer off, this time they're doing a solo competition. So a bit about Blazers this time around. End of day two, they had um, apparently 80 to 100, 100 accounts or so Rot had on a Lunar Diplomacy defending it. So on Monday, everybody got the requirements for Lunars, and using their knowledge from holding down Shiloh, they attacked at 7.15 a.m. Eastern, which is when most of the Rot players, if they're American, <laughs> were offline, and they were able, with a 33-man team, to take over. They even brought people who were doing Dragon Slayer 2 that were hugely geared up, even sculled up, even to, like, lose their stats, potentially. Um, they killed a Rot member at Rune Dragons in Solar Missions video. Definitely go check that one out. Um, and I think it's been their, their best performance for, uh, so far, they've said. So maybe they've created some kind of alliance or agreement where they're off that team, potentially, because they're, they're running around as a solo small of force or they're lying to me and like many clans do and maybe they're hiding in all these different well, teams ultimately 
someone is going to have to fall eventually because we can only take in the top 256 yep. players from this and they're going to have to pick and choose the best. Um, I do have some information that I just want to quickly touch on because you just mentioned Lunar Diplomacy. Huh? There's actually only been 61 players able to complete the Ooh. quest as of midnight uh, okay. or this morning. And out so. of uh, at least 1,000 people must, we must have had in this yeah. tournament, I wonder if any of those will actually make it into the 1v1s. There's definitely a good chance. It's a very ones. small number when you, when you consider in the, in, the, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's less than 10%. Mm -hmm. So very crazy mm -hmm. to see just so little. Desert Treasure, 244 players. The, the least completed quest is uh, Monkey Madness 2, which only two players have completed two as, of, as of midnight. What's wow. one solo mission? So, I mean, it, it yeah. must have been good strat. Yeah. Here we see some movement, guys. We are moving. Here okay, we go. Okay, so the clan from the east is starting to move in and attack towards the west, and uh, all we can see right now is just these poor baby chinchompers flying at <laughs> each other and exploding, uh, combusting on impact. Um, but right now, it's all about the clan, like I said before, trying to, you know, uh, react and uh, move as a huge squad, trying to avoid these flying balls of fur. Uh, exploding balls of fur. And now here we go, a whole force is storming on. This looks like it's the battle for Sparta, and uh, the players are going to be going in. You're going to be seeing a huge amount of damage numbers coming through. Players are going to be trying to focus those ice barrage spells, freeze them in place, which then lets the rest of the team focus. You'll be seeing a lot of these icons above players' heads. They're protection Ooh. prayers. Protect from range is effective against chinchompers. Protect from magic, which looks like the little magic missile bolt. That's obviously effective against ice and blood barrage. But the thing is, multiple people two different attack types, it's impossible to pray against two things at once, so you have to really pick and choose what you're using to exactly. pray against. And I will say one thing straight away, it looks like the whoever's defending Anakal right there, the they're absolutely fantastic. Really? And the, fog, uh, the fog did, but they did a fantastic job of defending as well. As the players from the east were flying in, they were able to hold their ground extremely well. And um, yeah, unfortunately I think we're, we're pausing yep. right now as something yep. has just occurred. So but, we do uh, have a mechanic built into the game that if something happens that isn't to our liking, I believe. Yep. Um, it immediately pauses everything. It's so like a, a default nice fail safe, if I yeah. believe. So yep. it may just be, but the, it may not be that the, the, there was nothing wrong, and it was just the fact that so many people hadn't moved out of the fog because there were a huge amount of people that were frozen there at that time. Yep. Yep. It could have been the fog progressed. Just left it too they late fell to out, but those automatic fail safes are just making sure that we have time to actually go and check to see if there was anything amiss. Mm -hmm. um, so for now, we're just going to assume that we're just uh, yep. all okay, and that until we hear and more, that we'll time, let you know. While but the, my while God, the games, while the game's paused, they're all sitting there right now, and everyone in the team's like, you see this guy here? That level 97? Yeah, right click, right click, get ready to go, get ready to go. And they're all just waiting like on the edge of their seats for the game to continue and bam, and all jump on someone at the same time. It's, it must be so riveting to be in team speak right now. You know what? It, it's one of the things that I actually wish I could have done. What, I've, I've a never been in a Dead Man finale. I played yeah. a couple of seasons, never bothered to actually try to get into a tournament, and I'm actually regretting it. I'm yeah. hoping that it comes you missed back. Out, well, man. it's going to come back, obviously, but I, I hope to, to actually bother to, to try to participate mm -hmm. in yeah. one of the tournaments yeah. if I'm not I mean, I, I still have to say, hands down, one of the most fun times that I've had was the very first Dead Man season. It was, it was a time when I was, I was just getting back into old school and I was starting to get that kind of like the passion and drive to play. And then Dead Man came about. And then I just remember for, for the next basically two, three weeks, my, me and one of my very close friends just both played alongside one another. And I mean, I was playing, uh, it was way before times of before I was streaming, before I was at Jagex, before I was even at the job before then. And uh, we were just playing all day, 24 seven. I was playing whilst at work until 4 a.m. But it looks like we're back into things. So it was just one of those things. It was here. one of those things. It was a fail safe. Too many people died at the same time. That is the mistake of the players for not getting into the safe yeah, zone when the fog went <laughs> off. <laughs> what a way to go as well. You have that whole finale and then you just get taken out by the fog. It must be so depressing. And anyway, you, you said about like these moments in now of team speak and the, yep. and the amount of hectic times that are going on. This is mm -hmm. exactly the moment that the deafen button was invented for. I want to just point out <laughs> one player uh, to the southeast I've got the or in the right corner well, yeah. with the dragon med helm. He's the only guy not moving. Look at no, him. The reason why he's got that so he's composed. Got, he's got the spear in hand, and the special attack out spear is like a dragon spear, mm -hmm. I think. Or he's got a dragon spear on it's him. It's a Vesta spear. Oh, it's a Vesta spear. Okay, yeah, well, in which case, spear. it's a special attack. It hits damage back ar around players around him. So he's like a, a suicide kind of squad about to dr fly in at the right moment. But oh my god, look at those people are flying. falling they so just, fast. They clear them so fast, exactly. Considering like previous tournaments, damage numbers that are flying out here, it just seems like people really know how to how oh. to focus people. There's no more of the the running round. Uh, okay, look never the mind. Movement. They're running around in a circle now. This is where you get like a school of fish. We're very well coordinated. That's better than ants. Yeah, and if you get if you get yeah, definitely <laughs> school of fish. Perfect. <laughs> But if you get left behind in these situations, it's just like, well, sorry, man, just try and, yeah. try and catch up. But, um, so if I can make a quick comment here, mm -hmm. what's going to happen here is, is one of the clans is going to um, become victorious, obviously. They'll have uh, many players left in this area. Um, they may have to kill some of their, their own if they have more than the, what is it, 164? 
128 yeah. rather, in each area? Each area, yeah. Um, and if they do, they're going to have to choose the players to go into the, into the final area. Now, it's one thing to survive this final area, but you don't get anything if you do that. You have to then go into the 1v1s, and make it be first. competent, mm -hmm. and destroy your opponent, beat him, then beat the next guy, and so forth, until you're the last player standing. Yeah, and uh, I talked to a few of the teams actually about this, and one of the teams in particular told me about uh, their strategies for the final area was OT, who's part of one of the alliances, and they said that they have, uh, they all fight back, unlike other clans. They have an advantage Ooh. in experience, despite numbers. You know, usually when clans get into these fights, they start to panic. Yeah, I know, right? They start to, like, you know, spam click the bruise and put on Phoenix necklaces mm -hmm. as well, try and stay alive as best they can. They don't fight back, they just try yeah, and live. Yeah, they just try and live. This team, they're, they're saying to me that they are, they're very confident. Very aggressive. Then. And yeah, aggressive play. Okay. And, and that's, again, about kind of the experience of these multi-clans. Even if you're an amazing 1v1 PKer, you might not be so experienced in these in these calls and in these moments and knowing exactly how to well, react. Well, the, the thing is, it kind of makes sense at the same time, though, because if you're on the forefront of the aggression and you're the one that's dealing all of that damage out, whilst you're eating, you're not able to do anything else. Your actions are limited. They're blocked because it's taken up by food. So you're not able to dish more damage back out. So the more damage you can deal to your opponent safely, the less damage in turn you're also going to mm -hmm. take. And that's, that's like one of the fundamentals of PvP in general. You know, if you can force your opponent to constantly be eaten, they have no opportunity to be able to hit you back. Yep. Very small windows, but, but overall it's a lot less. In addition to strategy, we're not seeing too much of, or maybe, maybe it's because they're purely all frozen, um, but if you are a massive team, if you run into another team mm -hmm. and they're using AoE spells and chin chompers, um, it, it begins to kind of be a little bit detrimental for the team, doesn't it? So it's all about positioning. And if you can, if you can outposition your opponents and you can like have a better spread, so you're not too far clumped, then ultimately it's a numbers game. If you have 50 mm -hmm. people that are hitting maybe 10 in a pile, whereas they're only hitting like the occasional two or three piles, you're going to take down that 10 pile super fast. And as a result, you know, you, you move forward yeah. and um, and you win the fight. So to point out, we have 560 players left, maybe slightly less than that now. We need to lose nearly half of that, actually. I mean, that number tallies, it's, it's actually less than the number of two clans that I've got information on here together. So you were talking earlier about these huge alliances. Yep. According to, to those that we're aware of in terms of the system tying them into clans, the top four in terms of player numbers, number one being Lit, started this tournament, this permadeath stage off with 253 members. 253? Yep. Well, they definitely lied to me about their numbers. Then, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's, that's by, by affiliation, yes. so it's not obviously 100% okay. accurate. We then had Rot, which apparently had 236 wow. players. Uh, Blazers with... 173 players. Oh, that must be an alliance then. I just had people. to, you know, yeah. sharp inhale because yep. of 73. It always appears, <laughs> no matter what happens. We're <laughs> plagued <laughs> now. Quality and then, uh, and then GG actually managed to put together decent numbers, 170. Wow. So okay, so they've managed to recruit, or maybe there's, there's some of the yeah. smaller teams I talked about, like Team Sweden, like Overtake, um, like CT and and uh, Frontline that have you know amalgamated into those those other forces right there. But uh, so that sounds, well, sounds really interesting. What we also know from previous Deadman mm -hmm. tournaments is out of these 250 in perhaps lit, you might even see that 20 of those are rot. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that too, especially. Yeah, they're <laughs> trying to, like, you know, take people down, backstab from the inside. When I spoke to Lip briefly, though, they did say they were, um, they've been gearing up quite a few members. We talked about Inya briefly before. Mm -hmm. He's one of the main guys they've, they've been gearing up from tournament to tournament since they've joined forces with, uh, with Frontline. They also have GG on their side, and we said a minute ago that GG have 170 players. So that is a huge alliance together. And uh, OT as well, one of the smaller clans, like I said, they were really confident in the multi-phase. You know, that's why they're able to, you know, get this far yeah. and uh, gives them the, the slight advantage over, over other teams, potentially. We have and so many experienced players that are in oh, yeah. Deadman now. Obviously, we know we've said how many times it's been on and how much people have learned and strategized. And mm -hmm. really, this is the, the penultimate one. So, yep. And well, I'm no, gonna, it, it, yeah, you know what I mean. Sorry, I'm just going to take a second to, to mention something we haven't mentioned yet, actually, is many streamers and even teams with a delay, perhaps, are mm -hmm. streaming this finale. So if you want to watch ours as, as long, or sorry, as well as somebody else's, get a few different perspectives, it's definitely a smart strategy. Load up those streams, watch yeah, these Get guys. that multi-twitch up. Come on, guys. If they get into the 1v1, ones it is absolutely quality watching it from a first person perspective yeah no for sure and they're all fantastic in terms of their uh, you know entertainment value or just their actual skills so do uh -huh. give them a uh, a watch and if not drop them a follow show them some love i just hope the skill specs is still alive so we can see as carol darrocking in the final <laughs> if he's if he's still going with that method uh, yeah, it's, 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 this has got to be the one tournament where he finally makes it through <laughs> all the issues and actually makes it into the 1v1s oh. and, and gets to part on a show he's hoping he's hoping 436 <laughs> players remaining Already? we still have to lose uh, nearly a couple hundred of those. Okay. But it will be a there will be a point where if it gets to 
you know, a stalemate and it's just taking too long, fog will start to approach in that center, yeah. I do believe, right? And, and slowly yeah. tick but down we'll, players. We'll slowly but, bring in the fog, nothing enough to, to kill somebody immediately, yeah, just enough just to, to remind them. Start you should taking be down something. their HP, just melting them a little yeah. bit more than the European sun is at the moment. Yeah, like, <laughs> like right here, I can see actually two huge forces, uh, the east side and the west side, uh, both trying to like wrap around. Like I said before, if you get left behind, then you get picked off. And it all, all comes down to really which team can pick off the most amount of numbers first until there's 128 players remaining. I even saw a few guys in max gear actually falling right there. But like we said previously too, you can't just be running around in circles trying to hide in your clan because then your clan's going to lose. Every yeah. single person does match in these situations. And uh, if you oh, have yeah, you know, 10, I mean, 10, 20% that are just walking around, um, you know, not don't know, knowing exactly what they're doing, like on a hot summer's day, it's, it's not going to, you know, not going to do very much for your team. So really in, in this hot summer I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're British. <laughs> what do you expect? We love to moan, especially about the weather. So it's just what it is. is. Um, Ian, yes. you've, you've obviously played Dead Man before. You've not been able to experience the finals in Deadman because you've always had the, you know, the fortunate opportunity to be able to commentate yes. them. But you have participated in the betas. and done really well is it possible would you be able to run through um run through us what might be going through these players minds right now in this situation bearing in mind there's less than 500 players left they're really starting to get down and all the actions ensuing yeah sure so the, the 1v1 begins suddenly the leader in the team speaks says quiet everyone everyone listen and you start a chant going so, you know naming your your, your best pk <laughs> trying to get closer and closer Bruce, to the final Bruce, 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 yeah, Bruce. whoever it is you're trying to hype them up then suddenly the whole team speak gets muted and like no one can talk so no one can put each other off and you're sitting in there, uh, final by final, round by round, waiting to see if your your iconic PKs can make it through right to the end. And uh, it, it's a really, it's a great community event, really, for these guys. Uh, uh -huh. A lot of the clans told me that you know beforehand, even before the tournament even starts, they sit in team speak, do like movie nights, all that kind of stuff, or Discord, or whatever they're, oh, they're using. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's very exciting for them. So they're basically prolific e daters. <laughs> I mean, in a words, sense. Not <laughs> all right. So back to the action, guys. We have 383 players remaining. Um, what this clan to the west is noticing, I believe, now is that they do have more numbers than mm -hmm. the clan yes. on the east. So and attack. if this fog ends up pushing in and doing some numbers, uh, they're going to they're gonna need to kill the opposing team because if they have more food, they'll get more players through. So they really need to be pushing them, making that damage happen, yeah. um, trying to take out their numbers. Yeah. They're, they're making very slow rotations, but the other team is just slowly moving away. Well, they're, they're both dwindling now down to, to very few m amounts, and one of the clans is going to take a push at some point, and uh, when they get that opening, when they manage to get, get that clump, that freeze, they just tell all their members straight away, guys, help out here. If we can take down these 10, 20 players, we've got a real shot at making it through these 1v1s. Mm -hmm. And those, those big uh, PKs that they've got in there, the ones that they've fed the whole entire way through, who have you know, the best in slot gear, the VLS, the, the Zerial Staff, the Barrows gear. Well, those see someone's that, about to get picked off in the corner here is being alive. speared out and there's just so many people hitting him and instantly just falls after this yep. spear. Dragon Spear absolutely lethal. Drops. We've watched Fool's Justice win and then play on stage for us next. <laughs> and Obviously being the winner, out. a very yeah, uh, high remember. target. Mm -hmm taken out of the game by Dragon Spear. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, as simple as that. A lot of these guys do uh, try and pick out those names to try and target them to give themselves the best chance of uh, going through. Of course, this multi-phase is just as important as the 1v1, and it's essential in, in making sure you've got the best chance possible if you get those, those huge uh, beasts to go through for you. Looking around now as well, within the inside of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's like a looter's paradise right now. I just see dragon armor sets and legs and There's stuff just everywhere. Literally stuff it everywhere. is quite an odd amalgamation of players here. Which team is which? We can see one to the northwest. Uh, we can see one just kind of to the south. And then there's just random players everywhere else. We always see this strategy right inside the, uh, the actual Anacol itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, the, to the bottom of the screen right now, you see all those players with their overheads up, stacking up, um, and they're just hiding in the corners. The thing about this is, there's only one way in, one way out. So if the clan tries to rush them, chances are they're going to get frozen and then clumped with those AOE damage abilities that we yeah. talked about before, the Chinchompers. We also saw spells. it backfire at once, though, didn't we? Because everyone was already in that area, yes. and they managed to take them. Get, they were just overwhelmed, and they just instantly got taken out because they weren't able to have a good spread on them like the rest of these yeah. two. It looks like this time round, though, whoever's in the middle is a clan that's you know that knows exactly what they're doing, and they don't have any uh, any spies in there because it was very easy for you know for the southern side or the northern side. So you see right there, they're taking out one person at a time. Maybe there are some spies in there, to be honest, man. And uh, they're trying to take down the more valuable players or the, the biggest it, threats it, to them. It could also be, the reality is, that this might literally just be two teams, but they're split into three different areas, yep. and they're now deciding which of their members they need to kill off and that they don't want to progress through to the 1v1s and say, look, you know, unfortunately, Jimmy, we're not you've worked for us all week. You've got everything we needed. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> it's time to you've sit got, in the corner no and watch. Chance. We're not yeah, quite to that point yet. We've got 326 players yeah. remaining. I mean, that will go soon. We've got 256. Two, that's yeah. 70 to go. Yeah. And when we're seeing one clump, which now it looks like the whole force are going through, there's two really good barrages there. That's going to have caught at least five, yeah, six players. Push. And they're going to be just taken down because they'll get overwhelmed. The team are going to try and defend. But it looks like they've actually just decided to avoid combat entirely and run to the opposite 
opposite side, leaving yeah, what looks like ten or so of their back. members these just alone. Being, these guys are being forced to eat constantly, but it's not enough. They've got too much target. And just like that, there you go, three, four, five, six dropped. And those guys that did drop as well, they had like the Darox helms, the tank gear on them. So those guys might have yeah. been some of the uh, the stronger players that were geared up for that finale. Uh, but no, that's unfortunate. That's the yeah, end that of that DFS walking around, that's a prime target. I see an oh, is that Armadil? Trying to blend into the crowd. Helm as well. Some guys want Armadil Helm as well, which is uh, quite interesting. Well, we definitely have seen a lot of boss kills going out here. I think in terms of like Saradomen kills alone, Commander Ziliana, 736 times, um, which wow. was just insane. Uh, Criara was killed 482 times this tournament. Ooh. So yeah, quite a huge amount of, uh, of players out there deciding to boss as opposed to, to level. And you've got some data there on quest completed. We talked about lunar, lunar diplomacy. It mm -hmm. looks like 244 players total. For uh, Desert, for Treasure, Desert Treasure, that was. Yeah. Keeping that in mind, that's again, that's a small percentage of the total players, yep. which means we might see many players in the final 256 without any magic at all. Potentially, yeah. I mean, I think as, as well, a lot of the clans in terms of their numbers, like I, I made you know, the little joke about Jimmy, who would be the, the mule for the bank, the clan. Th there's probably quite a lot of members that have literally just been playing for the sake of their clan or for their friends or even for a content creator, feeding them supplies the entire tournament. So for them, being able to be in this position now with just ranged and throwing chin chompers is, is just as effective. Yep. It obviously won't help them going through into the money Ooh. ones as much. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, it looks like the Falador area has reached 128 is. players and they've been teleported through to the one versus one final. Now I have to wait for the Anakal to catch Seems up Seems like well. we only have around about 21, 20 so players just to, to fall here. And then we'll be uh, teleporting those over to the 1v1s and we'll be getting straight into that 1v1 section. And it looks like the clans from the outside as well now are actually starting to move into the middle and they see a few of those guys that were, were defending. They've sent some of their, their ranged raggers or the guys with the chinchompers to try and throw in. And look at that angle. That guy's right in the middle of the entire fortress, somehow throwing it that far. And uh, catching quite a few people with it without being damaged back, which is uh, quite unique. But it looks like it's a bit of a stalemate. They're all the clans on the outside now are... There's not enough of them really to like, go for huge pushes anymore. And uh, they want to clear out the guys in the middle, because those guys in the middle they know from previous tournaments, potentially lit, um, have a huge alliance right now with you know, GG, OT, Frontline, like we said before. One of the guys from Frontline, uh, Inya, who has won uh, several of the tournaments before, rather came second in the rerun and came first in the last tournament. So they want to make sure they can take him out if he is hidden somewhere within that clump. Last I'm looking players. forward to, to getting into the, sorry, the 1v1s, then starting to recognize some names. Mm -hmm. We've done, this is our 15th Dead Man tournament. Uh, we're going to start to recognize names, I believe, as soon as we get into this thing. So, curious to see who we're going to start out with. There's, um, a, there's a lot of notable players that are in this tournament, and I'm very excited to see if, if a lot, if not all of them, manage to get through to the 1v1s. And uh, if so, I'll be able to tell you about those. Um, it looks like we've got, you're not going to have to wait too long, Archie, because no. there's only a few more kills And they finally started pushing here. the clans from the outside, actually going, wrapping in, trying to throw those chinchompers, throw those barrages on the southern corner. Uh, they're in a great position right now, actually, where they can't really get hit back very easily. Um, so, you know, if these guys don't start moving out of the inside, but at the same time, the second they move out of the inside, they can get frozen in that door, in that one-way entry. Yep. Um, they've got to do something, man. They, they can't stay here. We've only, you know, 10 players, maybe less than 10 players left to go now. It's just a, a, a case of, you know, do we, do we sacrifice there, our little there, players, there, little Jimmy, like you talk about before? There was no word of a lie. There is someone who is sitting there with Mystic and a Crystal Shield who has around about 8 HP, and he just keeps going in and out, but no one's hitting him. But his <laughs> HP bar is above his head because he keeps getting splashed by AoE spells. It's insane. And he's, and he's kept alive. Is it, the guy with Retribution just fell. He had two HP. Oh, but he went into the mix. So, like, that Retribution hit everyone in there right now in that square, which is uh, really unfortunate for him. He's, he's not getting invited again to that clan. We have only a couple players left to fall now, and these guys are going to push through to the one versus one. We can get into the, uh, the carnage, see the VLS weapons, and, yeah. and all that good stuff, all the, all the weaponry. It's surprising to see such, such loyalty, as this is the last dead man of this format mm -hmm. again. Um, I'd be blood barraging my own teammates at this point. I feel like this is our last <laughs> tournament. Today. Wow! And this is why you haven't played a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not how you get yourself into a team, Archie. <laughs> I'm just finding it fascinating just looking at the different types of gear sets that we look at. One player at. left to die. And what kind of people are going to be able to get into the tournament based on the gear? There's a dude in literally just full dragon hide. Is he going to go? Oh, look at these two guys. Which one is it? Oh, oh, no! Both of them. <laughs> Wait, they both went at the same time. Is, is that it? No. No. Oh. Not yet? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Is. Oh, that <laughs> poor guy with... He just died at the last second. Unfortunate for him. <laughs> he should have been invited... <laughs> Yeah, it, looks like, it looks like we did deal with some double deaths there, so we may be looking at maybe uh, two or three people getting a complete buy round because their opponent perished yeah. just in the last moment. 253 players remaining, so someone's okay. going to get a buy. And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah it looks like it. unfortunate yeah. for them, but looking right. for those that will face them. So, um, 
We're back again on the sofas. It's been an incredible tournament yes, so we far. <laughs> oh, well, we just, didn't move. I'm not used to casting, so well, I didn't really cast. I just kind of, I've just been here. Um, so so we've, we've gone through the tournament. We've seen the two final areas. We've seen the clans. We're, we're curious to see which players from those clans have, have made it through, of course, mm -hmm. um, and which recognizable players will make it into the 1v1s. But for any new players, or sorry, new viewers, less familiar with the Dead Man tournament, what are we now about to watch? We are about to watch one of the best moments of PvP content that you can see. So, <laughs> P <All right>. P <laughs> PvP and RuneScape is quite iconic in that there are three different attack styles. So you have range, you have mage, you have melee. And obviously melee you've got to be within close proximity, otherwise with a range and a mage fight. We spoke earlier briefly about the barrage spell in the ancient spellbook which freezes opponents. So we see a lot of, of that being utilized to keep your opponent away from you. And then you've also got the overhead prayers which uh, reduce damage by 40%. So making sure you've got the right overhead prayer to what your opponent is using to be able to defend yourself and mitigate damage is essential as well as obviously maximizing your uh, offensive output by getting the getting the, the hits on the off prayer if that is going to make sense. It's a, it's a game of mind games basically yeah. where you're trying to um, trick your opponent into being in the wrong gear because range beats mage, mage beats melee, melee beats nothing. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, it beats, beats um, range. Right. So, so so about the metas, yeah. uh, what we're looking for in the first few mm -hmm. rounds, the, the names that you're going to want to follow throughout this entire mm -hmm. thing are the guys with the full arms, with potentially the dragon fire shields, yep. the Zuriel staff, the Vesta's longsword 100%. Oh, the Vesta's longsword brings out some fantastic moments. Mm -hmm. We've seen some great KOs. If you saw the video at the very start when we introduced, there was an insane KO against someone who was using protect from magic. That Vesta's longsword just pokes through anything. You don't stand a chance. Yep. Yep. Um, we've got Armadil, we've got ACBs in the game. Mm -hmm. When you can spot those guys early on, you can remember their name, you can watch them go through and yep. win this thing. And of course, uh, like in previous tournaments, if you do kill somebody that has a DFS that's charged or Barrow's gear, that does have uh, equipment on it, you can still pick it up, you don't have to like, you know, fix it like you do in the main game. So um, if you do beat someone that has stronger gear, it's a huge benefit to you. Um, not only does it reduce the competition for your other allies and such, but it, it means you're stronger and have a much better chance going through right to the final. So when we get down to like the last 16 or the top eight or so, we start seeing guys that are just in you know complete max, the lot, everything. Although there are quite a few of them actually going in with that gear already. Uh, like I mentioned before, yeah. a lot of the clans feed around three to five players with this gear already, and hopefully, fingers crossed for them, they've managed to make it through the multi-phase and uh, have a chance to really go right the way through to the, uh, the so 1v1 finals. Just to quickly notice, guys, mm -hmm. we're seeing this is the banking phase, obviously. Yep. There's 10 minutes left, so we're looking um, about nine minutes left, actually. We can see some people that we might recognize that have made it through the 1v1s. Aiza, do you want to read some of those names? I can. Do you want me to just, like, speed far through them? Because I can for if it. you want. Okay, we've got Rotniko, Abdullah, Ditterbitter, Boti, Manked, Bellis, Mika, Moni, Spartmac, Robert, Alfie, Sicknerd, Skill Specs, oh. and Solo Mission. We're, we're all so happy for Skill Specs there. <laughs> I, I'm just, I am, because, like... Yeah. I'm just thinking back, and it's a tough subject to bring up because no one ever wants to talk about it because it's, it, does, it does suck. But there have been times when he's been either invited into the, into, into, onto the stage or he's been playing, and there have just been some issues, some foreseeable and, and unavoidable ones. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for him to finally on the last dead man as well, it would just be... The worst scenario would be is if it's the last dead man and something happens to him again. Well, for those that don't know, Skill Specs recently moved to Australia, so uh, yeah. no I've technical heard, issues. I've heard that the Australian ping. internet's not the best out there. So he's going to have to competing with uh, a lot of really. He's going to have some ping. Yeah, he's yeah, going to have yeah. some ping issues potentially, but he's using the Carol's Darok setup. I, we always talk about the Darok seeing right. someone bring out the axe and swing a ninety or something. If it's going to happen today, yeah. Skill Specs is our man that we've you know mm -hmm. got that hope in. So please, but Skill I mean, Specs, it, give us some content. There's, there's <laughs> obviously some fantastic names in there, but just to note as well, like Boti, one of the first Deadmans that is really yeah. put a lot of time into in a in while, a while. Yeah. and uh, and clearly it's paid off and he's yeah. managed to make it through. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, to we, see have, we have we have Ditter as well, who was another guy who the entire week's been making content and been mm -hmm. decaying a lot. He was fed by the Clan Cutthroat, who was part of the Rot Alliance, and uh, from the names we've seen in there, actually, we have a very 50-50 split of of one alliance or the other, yeah. which is also quite. Interesting. I'm just going to reiterate quickly, mm -hmm. many of these guys are streaming. So 100% yep. yep. if I'm a viewer right now, I'm opening up at least three or four streams. You're going to want to watch these fights. They're going to be good. They are fantastic. Who's, who's your guys' money on? Who are you looking forward from that list that we see in front of us? We just named down. Um, Ser serious answer? Mm -hmm. I think seriously. Did or better? Ah, nah, Bellis. No, Meg. Belli Bellis. 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 Oh, Bellis will Mika. Kick oh, there's too many. Sorry. So I think serious answer is, is Bellis, but in terms of like fan favorite for me is uh, it's going to have to be skill specs. It always is. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm very biased on that. I okay. always have said so. So that's 
I'll stick with it. <laughs> I want to see, I want to, I've been watching his videos all week. I really like Solar Mission's content. He um, has like, got max stats as well. The DS2, 200 quest points, Barrow's gloves, the lot. He's got Vengeance as well, I'm pretty sure. So one of the tanks is going to be powerful, but Bellis is a good friend of mine as well. Manked, who's won previous tournaments and uh, unfortunately made it to the, to the 1v1 finals just in quite a couple now. So for him to take back a win, I think would be great for his, uh, his, his Twitch and, and his YouTube and such. Uh, yep. Boaty as well, another good friend of mine. Um, d darn it, man. Everyone, I want, I want to see. Yeah, I, 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 really I could well, literally right? say like 70% yeah. of those names on yeah. there. It's very tough. It always is because, you know, we've got such a great mm -hmm. community with, with the old school RuneScape. It's one of the best things about it. So many fantastic people, content creators, and just players alike. Yeah. But we can also recognize that many of uh, the content creators mentioned in the beginning didn't make it. Just noticing there's no Torvesta oh, yeah. in there. And what oh, we might yeah. see is even a, a, a couple of these guys go head to head. We could see a Bodhi versus Skill Specs. <laughs> if it's gonna, ever going to happen, this is when it needs to happen, the final DMM for a while. Yep. Um, I look, I look forward we, to seeing we, it. I mean, let's not forget as well, Sick Nerd, obviously mostly known for, for Iron Man content now, a fantastic hardcore Iron Man account. He's yep. pushed the limit in terms of PVM on that account so far. Definitely up there in terms of um, his, his account and how far it's progressed. And clearly showing that he has skill just outside of that game mm -hmm. mode too. So He's done really well this week. We also see Mika in there as well. Uh, Mika has been making content this entire week, every single day. We talked about earlier about having like 20 hour days, but still being able to edit videos somehow. <laughs> He's a prime example of someone that does that. Oh yeah. You know, really, really well and very, uh, very consistently every single tournament. So uh, kudos to him. And he never used to be a PVP. He's not known for his PVPing. But in the last few tournaments, at least, he's done exceptionally well and gotten further and further. So I think he's a fan favorite as well to see, yeah. him, to see him go the whole way. And, and as far as gear goes, uh, we know many of these guys are geared up very well. Their stats are impressive. However, only a few of them have experience either winning a dead man tournament, being Bellis and Manked, mm -hmm. um, and a few of them actually have experience playing on stage under pressure. Yeah. And that is a seriously valuable thing. Uh, when we did the PvP All-Stars last year, we saw some very formidable opponents mm -hmm. uh, going up on stage and shaking and losing to people that they definitely shouldn't have lost to so yep. you know we'll have to see how it works this time for those of you that are just joining us and may have missed the the last um, hour or so of the broadcast we have just finished the permadef stage of dead man which is essentially watching over a thousand people get absolutely decimated we're now currently in the banking phase which is kind of like a um a preparation moment for all the players involved but are just heading into a 1v1 um series of fights now so the mm -hmm. top 256 players from dead man um, are, are going to be very shortly, within probably the next four or, so, four or so minutes, moving into solo fights. So it's, it's all on them from now on. There's no, there's no clan involvement, there's no help from anyone else, and there's also no mistakes to have to worry about in terms of coordination or communication. It's down to the player, their individual skill, and if RNG is on their side. Well, I'm going to point out one quick thing before we get into this. Um, RuneFest tickets are now on sale. Ooh. All right, should have mentioned this earlier, but there it is. We'll mention it again at the end. Um, early bird tickets have sold out very, very quickly. Um, it's RuneFest, obviously. Everybody wants to go, so go ahead and get your tickets. Um, we'll have a link in the chat. There you go, there's my bit. I think right. every year RuneFest has just got bigger and better. I think last year, for me, definitely was the best RuneFest that I'd personally attended. It was a fantastic time. I got to meet so many awesome people. I'm really looking forward to RuneFest this year again. And um, I think this year it seems that there's been a huge focus on community involvement in terms of deciding what content should and shouldn't be, be doing. I believe there's also um, somewhere on the old school RuneScape um, website, if you look at the news pages, you'll see that there's a, you know, there's a petition for you to come forward and submit ideas as to what should be included at RuneFest. So if you haven't already, definitely check out the website. The graphic popped up a moment ago. Head over there, figure out whether it's something that you can or can't get involved in. I would definitely recommend it, and if not, Please yeah. send in some suggestions in terms of which content should be provided at the at We're the doing event. something exciting, I should have mentioned, actually. We're splitting it up into kind of a, a two-day activity. So the first okay. day is the Golden Gnomes Day. Yeah, which is normally done like the, the finale of, yeah. the, of the evening kind of thing. It's, it's a very long day, RuneFest. Of course, there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. We've got announcements and reveals and, and the cosplay and all these different things. And then the Golden Gnomes to top it all off. We've done a, a Dead Man tournament at RuneFest before. We have, um, yeah, But the time. Golden Gnomes, one of my personal favorites, mm -hmm. will be the day before. We can put a little bit more awesome. emphasis on that. Get suited up, so. man. You want to see the bow tie in person? <laughs> <laughs> you can meet Ian at first. <laughs> yeah. They've seen no, that bow tie so many times They've now. They've seen it enough, man. They want to go in the bin. Um, it is the most anticipated like event, RuneScape-wise, uh, yeah, of, of, yeah. of the year. Apart from Dead Man Mode, of course. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's meet all your friends, all the people that you've met online, yeah. and uh, all the content creators that you watch from your own home. So, yeah. 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 All right. So we've got just under a couple of minutes, it looks like, to get into this Dead Man finale. Um, again, guys, we're, we're going to pick favorites to win out of this list we can see on the screen. Who's winning it? Uh, on the screen? Yeah. 
Go on, I got my boy manked. Bring it home. All right. That's, that's a very, to be honest, I might say manked as well. <laughs> I'm going to say manked. Okay. I, I always have said my serious answer being manked because he's on, always on stage. And don't get me wrong, I love manked, but after Bellis' performance in the rerun, I'm going with Bellis on this one Okay. Yep. as a serious answer. That's two players from the same team. All right, well, we'll have to see. Rock coming back for does the that first make it, time. It, does that make it that anyone's a, no one's a, everyone's a winner then, right? If, if either of them win. But these are only a few of the names. Well, the same they team. share money amongst the team, potentially. Yeah, yeah so, so it could work out. Th these are only a few players that we know about. Oh, yeah. There might be a lot more that are under, you know, covert operative names. Were they, you know, well, these guys are hiding under different in. names, but fortunately, um, we, ha we have spies of our own. <laughs> 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 we don't. Um, Unless your name's Robert or Boaty, they just decided to go for... Oh, actually, no, no, just, just Robert, actually. Yeah. Robert just went with the name Robert. <laughs> skill specs went with skill specs. He didn't fearless, fearless man. I want skill specs. Yes, still. You know what? If you can survive through that fog phase, keeping that name, that's very impressive. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe they just don't well think they're as much of a threat <laughs> for the one v one. No, I'm kidding. I love oh, you, Robert. Bro. He's a, he, like everyone has improved considerable since oh, like, the yeah. first rounds of Dead Man mode. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah. so let's let's see if we can hop in game then. Um, while these players are even still banking for the last minute, we're going to see if we can just kind of analyze the situation, um, see who's fighting who. And one of the most go. amazing parts is getting able to see this wedge. arena, which oh. looks absolutely fantastic as always. Dude, look at his inventory, man. Robert's got the full Bandos and the BLS, wow. and he's got Vengeance, and he's stacked with max stats. Robert, wow, big, he, he is going for those big boy melee hits, isn't he? Wow. This yeah. looks like, yeah, we're going for a, uh, a ranged melee Vengeance. Oh, he's putting it on. He's showing off. He's right. a dragon kite shield So real too. quick, guys, um, as, you might have, uh, as you should have noticed, um, after the fog session, session, section, rather, you get to bank, get all your gear, so that's why they have so many brews. These will be a little bit longer than average fights, but once they get to the point, or if they get to the point where they're dragging, we'll bring the fog in just to help speed things on a little bit. From here on forwards, we will restock their gear um, with some sharks, um, some potions. Um, it'll be much quicker paced from that point on. Mm -hmm. So these guys have the exact same inventory. So we'll, we'll talk about the two fights that are happening right now. We've got Robert versus UKM. Not too sure who uh, UKM is with. I think we're ready to, to pretty much begin now, any moment. And uh, Robert's and his inventory are exactly the same, despite having a two-way switch of the uh, the armor setup. So Robert's opted for some mage defense gear, which is the, uh, the black dehyde top and the carol skirt, which is huge. And then the bandos for the tanky armor against range and melee. And then you've got UKM just sticking with uh, the standard setup. He's got no switches apart from his melee to his range. So if these guys opting for the tank build, like we said before, they have the Lunar's done, I believe, which means they've got vengeance, which means a portion every 30 seconds of the damage dealt to them is gonna hit back at the opponent. And um, we're going to watch these VLS swings, these stat hammer swings, because that's what's going to really, you know, dictate the pace of this fight and who is, has the uh, slight advantage. Yeah. So here we go, guys. This is the beginning of the 1v1 section. We're starting things off with Robert and UKM Prod. Since this fight will take a little bit more time than the typical fight because they have so many brews, I'm hoping we can jump around from fight to fight. Um, they don't really typically get a mention, but I'd like to say a thank you and well done, as always, to Mod Rock and Bruno. They're our cameramen for this fight. So... Cheers, guys. We're starting out with Robert. He's doing very strong. He's definitely uh, got the upper hand at the moment. Those VLS swings are, are doing work. UKM Prod just is literally quite, it's just quite literally prodding. Only sticking with range, hasn't opted to use any melee hits yet. Probably just because of the fact that the Stadius Warhammer as a melee weapon just isn't as, as strong. He's going to want to use the special attacks to reduce Robert's defense. Whereas Robert can slash with the, uh, with the sword. However, that oh, being he said... he could have him there, dude. He was on like 30, 40 hit points and he went for an off-hit hit. With, with full bandos and a 5k, you can literally whack 50s pluses, I believe, without the special attack, potentially. Um, so it's, it's a very scary combo to go up against. So, Ian, if you were in this situation, if you, if you were UKM prod with yep. that exact gear, Statius Warhammer as your melee weapon, would you be going in for those melee hits in between range or would you just focus range as he's doing now? Um, is this a bad tactic or is he playing this There it is. There it is. Zero. I, I would definitely try and prioritize the melee hits because I believe Robert's Bandos has an insanely high range defense bonus, but um, the, the gear advantage that Robert has right now is just so huge. There's not much he can really do wrong, um, as long as he you know pays attention, and gets those specs out on the right press. Especially here, wow. 24. It's not it's not a massive. It's it's not bad either though. But um, I think Robert's gonna take this one of ease. He's not even in a single brew yet, or drunk, drunk a single brew yet. And uh, UKM is finding pretty difficult to uh, yeah. to stay in the fight. Now we can come back to this fight afterwards, but I'd really like to jump over and see how skill specs is doing. I would love to. There he is. So as we mentioned before, skill specs. A difficult opponent. He's opted for the, uh, oh! The wow, a 53, 53 just before the prayer. Wait, is that going down? And the Darox. 
So he's got Carol to Darrock combo, but as you can see, no rune pouch, which means if the man wasn't able to complete lunar diplomacy since Rot was uh, was holding it down. And the guy he's up against looks like he might be from Rot actually. Um, so can skill specs get his revenge despite not being able to get lunas done? Looks like the, the stuff he's opted for. The problem with this right now is he has Carols, which has very low defense capabilities, and his opponent's just an absolute massive tank bonus. He's got the Crystal Shield. He's got Darrock's legs. Yeah. The Darrock's uh, plate body is well camped. So it's going to be hard for Jay to actually do any damage here. And he's got to sit low hit points for that Darox effect to actually kick in. Especially with Vengeance, it's very risky. And as, as great as the Karos crossbow is in terms of speed, in terms of pure damage, it, it can fall short at times with the, uh, you know, with the effects of the Rune crossbow and Enchanted bolts, for sure. If you can get off a good Diamond bolt spec, it's going to deal quite a hefty chunk because it ignores the portion of defense. Whereas the Karos, he's got to try and get those Karos bolts to hit through the insane defense of, uh, of X. It's X just... It's just the unfortunate ability as well. The fact that you look next to him, the fight to the right, Ned Stirk. Look at him. He's got a granite shield, some, uh, some, <laughs> some dragon plate legs, and dragon medham. Why couldn't skill specs have that opponent? But instead, he gets given a, a 122 combat maxed demon who's got, you know, just absolute yeah. crazy, crazy gear. But it's, it's one thing to, to make it through a couple of fights and then die, mm -hmm. but to die to the guy who might go on to win it or take second place, that, that's you not can't feel too bad. Yeah. 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 Ultimately, even if he was to get a buy through on this round against someone with lesser gear, he's going to end up facing against these at some point so um, it's not like he would have managed to get an upgrade from Ned Stirk whereas fighting against uh, SXX here he would be able to get some decent upgrades if he wins and we've seen what happens before in previous tournaments especially with weapons such as the VLS all it takes is one special attack to deal a huge amount of damage and then the fights instantly turned around yeah and SXS is playing this smart. He's not dropping below 90 hit points. He's not dropping his prey melee. Skill specs is only hope of getting this kill um, as he's got, well, he doesn't have a special attack left with the VLS. Is to use that Derox. And he's not going to get low enough HP. He's been doing well as it is, but he is at a brute disadvantage, not looking too favorable. I mean, the thing about Carol's crossbow is it's, uh, it hasn't got the biggest range bonus, so even though it can do a lot of DPS on low defense opponents. On a fight like this, you're fighting some of the crystal shield and that full tank gear, it's just going to hit zeros all day long. And Skillspace is now realizing that, and he's finally decided to start opting for the VLS switch a bit more, even through the prayer. It is far superior than using Carol's crossbow. And what he's going to do now, I believe, is stick to the VLS, and if he gets low enough, and the guy's not protecting melee, he might be able to go for that Darox Axe, but of all the opponents to have and to, to bring this setup in for, it's, uh, it's quite unfortunate. Probably the yeah, yeah, opponent is him. literally a, a wall. He's got a, a Crystal Shield, the Darox, the Verax, the Dragon Boots, the Fire Cape. You're not going to hit with the Carol's Crossbow on that. No. And uh, unfortunately for Jay, skill specs rather, he only has seven brews now compared to the other guys, yeah. nine, 10, 11 or something like that. Plus the guy's got, this S SXS guy has got Vengeance too. So like I said before, a portion of damage every 30 seconds is gonna be hit back. And that's why it was so crucial for Rot to really hold down the Loon Diplomacy Island as best they could and not let any other teams through because it gives you such a, a huge advantage in a fight that lasts, goes on for quite a while, especially from two range tanks as we see here. We can Having see that advantage that makes, you know, the fog is it happens so Yep, much. the fights have taken that long now that the fog has started to tick regardless of this so you're going to see these constant twos happening this could happen this could actually favor skill specs lowering his hp to make those darox hits hit more maybe we'll have a chance to get that melee in hit in but it doesn't look like it's going to work out very well for him his opponent has so much food left he really needs to get a ko because otherwise he's just going to get completely out eaten however that being said he could also force his opponent to panic start sipping brews and actually run out of restores if he's not managing his potions correctly he could be in a position where he's got a lot less um, stats so he won't actually be able to deal any damage he might have a huge amount of hp but he's not dealing anything back we'll have to just wait and see what actually happens here Skill Specs is just praying for this guy to drop his prey melee, but SXX is not taking any risks. He's not going to drop the prey melee. He's not going to drop below 90 hit points. You can see him right there. He got down to 74, 72 at the lowest, and he's right back up. Yeah. No mistakes. And, and the thing here now for Skill Specs is that like that VLS specs he just had there, that he, he uh, shot both of them out. Um, that was the only care potential he really had besides the Darrock Axe, which again is very unlikely to hit. So. But as we know historically with Deadman tournaments, the last couple have been won by Tribrids. Um, we're not watching any right now. Um, we can see there's a guy actually with an Infernal Cape in this final as well. We're going to see if we can hop over to him. There it is. Oh, Log out. out. That's a recognizable name. Who I is that? I think he might be from Blazers, but I could be wrong there. Um, it looks like he went and got the Infernal Cape himself from one of the chest drops. Unless he decided to do it in the tournament. If so, ah, credit to him because that is not easy. No, to no one killed DNA. Zook according to the stats here. So that was from a chest. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> well, it's probably wild. the guy who got the chest was killed by Log out. Yeah. Chances and um, really interestingly, again, man, we have another range tank against him. Both guys here, both being maxed combat, and uh, he's trying for the Arams, trying to freeze his opponent to step underneath. 
Um, oh, actually, the other guy, unfortunately, yeah, he's using Vengeance, so... Looking at Brutus' advantage right now, he's down a couple of brews. I mean, that could, that could, that's nothing potentially if he manages to get a step under and get some specs out. Looks like he has 100% special attack for Logout, but no special attack weapon to use. He did not bring in a VLS or a, a stat warhammer or anything like that, unfortunately, for him. This could be a nice win for him if he manages to pick this up. He'll at least have the, uh, you know, the Stelius warhammer. Yeah. Whilst not as ideal as the Vesta's longsword, it still is a special attack weapon. And these fights, you want to be able to push and squeeze every last advantage that you can take use of because it really does come down to sometimes the last one or two doses of food, maybe even the last one or two hits. Mm -hmm. Right, back to skill specs now. Looks like skill specs is down to 30 hit points. He just and his only chance of the fog thing down is to get that massive 90 axe, but the other guy is not taking off Frey Melee. He knows skill specs' plan. It's now on LJ. He's going to take it He's out. Gone. There it is. Let's get some clappers in the chat for skill specs. Well done. Robert's still going strong, actually. Yeah, he's, yeah, looking, he's looking good. This, this, this wow. looks like he's pretty much able to just outlast his opponent, who will eventually die to the fog, if not a hit beforehand. It's it looks very course. unlikely that Robert's going to die. He's not able to get specked out. There was a really nice hit from him. His opponent's completely out of food, now completely out of prayer. Last hit, and that's it. Yeah. Robert progresses through to the next round as well. You have to appreciate the GFs. Yeah, it was far closer than I thought it would be as well, considering that the robot has such a huge, huge advantage with uh, the, uh, the full bandos there. Now, log out here with one brew left, but no restores. He's messed up his brew to restore ratio, which means as he starts brewing, which he's started to do now, his stats are going to be drained. That's it's it. no and longer going to be able to make use of that magic as well, which he went through all the effort to bring. That's extra invent spaces that he could have used for other stuff, but now he's just going to have to hope that his opponent isn't able to deal, uh, heal through the damage he's dealt. But his stats are going to be so lowered, he's, uh, he's not going to be able to use magic, he's not going to be able to deal as much in general. That could have cost him. I think it will cost him the fight, actually. Looks like LMF has a brew left and full hit points almost, and Logout is just gonna, it's just a matter of time before the fog takes him out as well. Uh, it's not a nice sight to see, you know, the range, the, the tanks beating the, uh, the hybrids, but to be fair to Logout as well, he doesn't have the most amazing gear. He's got Mystic Boots on mm -hmm. as well. He uh, doesn't have a, uh, one of the new staffs either. Uh, or a VLS or anything like that. So maybe that's the difference that it would, have, would have taken for him to actually get past this fight. Only a 50 HP loss in the end for Logout, if he does lose, that is. I mean, maybe he'll come back, brew down, but I very much doubt it. Trying it's, to juke yeah. his opponent into thinking he had magic. I don't actually uh, think it was possible, to be honest. No. His opponent getting some nice legends. upgrades there as well, though, going from uh, Dragonhide up to the Carols, obviously from, from Logout, who left it there. Wait, is he... As this well guy has an entire hey, inventory of files. Him. Disqualify him for boxing! <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not too sure what that was for. Uh, you know, full inventory of nothing. <laughs> and so we were talking earlier about the clans that have fed members in their team. Yeah. Um, those were not the fed members. So Chest wins that one, and we move on to... Lock them like up Lock them up will uh, end up winning this one. Again, more range tanks. We're really looking forward to the Cheek. next round where we can see which tribrids have actually made it through. The guys with the ancient magics, those are the fights you want to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, still waiting to see where this is going to go. Um, this is the last fight. There oh, is. this is the last one. Beautiful. And there it is. One thing just to note that you might notice when we go into this next round, there's going to be a little bit of a pause. It seems like... Uh, the wonderful people at Jagex are going to be looking at changing some of the players' names just to make it a little bit easier for us to actually talk yes. about them. Because there's a lot of different characters in there, and uh, yeah, it's not the easiest to try and pronounce them at a, uh, a pretty quick rate. So yeah, yeah we can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we might be uh, taking a few seconds, so bear with us while that gets done. But wow, one other thing to notice that, that we're going to be going into the next round as well is that we won't be seeing people with full inventory worth of brews. I think from this round out. They're given a, 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 de a preset determined amount of supplies that is system driven, which consists of, I believe, sharks, uh, a couple of brews, one or two restores, uh, a range and a combat potion, and, and that's you. all, right? Yeah, just about. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and, and there are limited amounts, obviously, yep. but if you do kill your opponent, you have extra supplies, you can drop those to the floor. Yep. So. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that whole 1v1 stage there, we saw quite a bit of variety in terms of builds and in terms of gear. It does seem like uh, this round, the fights that we were able to focus on was predominantly um, tank builds, which we've seen in previous tournaments do really, really well. Um, it would be very interesting to know if there were fights that carried on that we weren't able to catch that were hybrid and then how those will fare up against these, uh, these new tank builds. Yeah. Those that we did see, I think almost every fight that we managed to catch saw the, uh, the actual victor in one way or another getting an upgrade in terms of gear as well which is must be a real nice feeling for them yeah up, in, up until the last tournament as well i did i did find that uh the range tank meta was kind of like you know becoming almost too good to be true yeah you know, it could be everyone um but last time round and in the rerun as well specifically yeah the rerun was fantastic we, saw, we saw so many hybrids that just proved that if you are skilled enough that you can you can definitely walk all over someone that's in tank gear so yeah. now that mm -hmm. both players have got an even inventory um we should see some much more exciting, fast-paced fights coming in now. Yep. 
So I'm curious to see out of that list of um, players that we saw make it through, mm -hmm. how many of those made it through the first round. Um, we're still yet to hear about Bodhi, Manx, Bellis, mm -hmm. um, quite a few of these guys. Solo Mission, Nika, of course. So once we get information on that, we'll share it with you. But again, many of these guys are streaming, so you can probably check it out yourself. So, just a matter of minutes, uh, Bodhi has died. Bodhi, oh, Bodhi. there it is. In, in, in the information's guys. come through on request. He, he didn't make it through to the round, I think is a nicer way to say it, because without context, that could be pretty, pretty, oh. pretty, pretty <laughs> well, hard. He, he went, wait, he went down in the, in the multi-phase? No, I think he went down in the 1v1s because oh, he made it through, wow. yeah. It's just that Archie just out of nowhere just shouted, Bodhi's died. <laughs> okay. and, and we're not watching any gameplay, <laughs> so <laughs> context is okay. very important in this, so. Yeah, All right. he's, he's not made it through to the second round of 1v1s. Oh, bless him. Sorry, Chris. I know you hate commentating with me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see about which, uh, which other content creators make it, make it through um, and then who we're going to be starting with. Um, again, we want to be bouncing between mm -hmm. these fights quite quickly, but these fights will be more fast paced, yeah. or faster paced rather, because there aren't going to be so many brews. Um, and yeah, it should be just a few more minutes while these guys bank, or it's not bank actually. They're Shut just uh, yeah, waiting for a, for a Jagger to change names and they're just, you know, composing themselves. I think this is where we can see Range Tank be a little bit less effective because in the first round, Range Tank has a huge amount of resources to, to keep them stocked the entire mm -hmm. time. Whereas in this round, they're not able to constantly keep on eating through the, the high burst potential which Hybrid does bring along. Yeah. Range is typically a lot of consistent damage and it's about whittling down your opponent. Um, hybrid has the potential of a lot of bursts, especially if you can catch them off prayer and on the wrong gear, uh, gear sets, for example. Yeah. And, and that's when potentially range tank could start to, to fall it's, behind. It's all about that momentum, yeah. in a way, because the VLS can literally hit 50s and 60s and such, and AGS can hit 70 somethings. Um, you've got to sit, you know, high HP the whole time. And every time you eat a shark, and we have only 20 sharks in your inventory, it yeah. delays you by a few game ticks. You can't just, you know, eat a shark and then keep firing back like you can with brews, with, uh, with, with uh, restores as well. When you're drinking potions, you can still keep firing back. Mm -hmm. So you're able to keep your HP at full uh, the whole time, but pretty much, not have any really chance of dying unless you run out of supplies. So now we're going to see that momentum coming into play whereby if you get caught in the wrong prayer um, and then you start to make mistakes and you have to start panicking and all that kind of stuff, that's where it, one, one big VLS spec can turn into, you know, half your inventory yep. gone in supplies because you just can't get back into well, it. Well, you think it's, if you get hit at 60, that's three sharks. And I think you're only given something like, is it 12 or 14 sharks in total? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, yeah, it's not like a huge that. We'll amount, have a look when especially when you consider the, the, the invents that you already have. Um, so yeah, it can be very, very detrimental and you have to be very careful. Things are going to get really serious here on out um, and it's always a very exciting time to, to watch. So. Yeah. And, and again, touching on um, the skill and the confidence going into these next rounds, being a ranged tank is a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean it's, it's monumentally Just easier. <laughs> so well, you can sit there with Otto yeah. Retaliate. Um, and many of these players, again, don't have Vengeance because Rot was holding it down. So Rot, again, picking up a strategy somewhat perhaps influenced by Fools from the previous season. Mm -hmm. Fools was hol holding down Shiloh Village, um, stopping people from getting piety and, and so many other things. Rot, this time around, was holding down Lunar Island. They eventually did lose it to Blazers, mm -hmm. right? Um, but they probably Moment stopped. Momentarily, I think Blazers got a few people through. Okay. And then Rot came back and, and held it down. Oh, they took it back? With CT yeah. and Frontline, or what about the teams that they're with, sorry? There we go. We can see some, some yeah, names of players who are making it through. Thank you, guys. We've got Rot and Nico. We can probably assume there are many other Rot players that have made it through as well. Um, we've got Abdullah, Mankt, Bellis, Sparkmac, Robert, Mika. Um, Alfie, Alfie and Solo and Mission. Solo Mission. So That's quite a, a few guys. Yeah, big, big list of names. There. I'm not seeing Sick Nerd either. Unlucky Sick Nerd. Well. I'll be really interested to see what, what gear setup he opted to go for in the end. Yeah. I think that's one, one thing I really enjoy doing is going back through everyone's past broadcasts for those yeah. that I didn't catch to, you know, in the moment, obviously being here and watching the tournament unfold live. Uh, I like going through, checking their past forecasts and seeing what happened. And yeah. I've been doing there. I've been doing my best every night, like on my phone or before going to bed, trying yeah. to catch up on YouTube, like see all these videos. And then by the time I've watched like three or four of my favorite content creators, suddenly there's like two or three more that popped up. <laughs> I'm just sat yeah. in bed for like hours just trying to catch up. So um, I know I know that I know the feels. <laughs> all right, guys. So let me ask you a question. You're going into the one v one phase. You feel like you're relatively well equipped. Uh, what's your mindset? What's your strategy? Going into the one v one phase. Going right into now. the next round. Let's say you've won your first fight. Gosh, I'd be pretty happy to have made it. You know, if you win one, you just got to win another. Um, is that what you're telling yourself? Um, as long more. as I win one. As, you've, as you won one, you've got this okay. far so far. You're just playing for fun, really. You've got to remain calm. Um, and it's a lot of pressure, man, especially the fact that 
obviously one thing is you've just spent a whole week grinding out starting from scratch but the other thing is if you're one of those fed players your whole team is really counting on you you've been chosen as an elite member like above everyone else mm -hmm. it's been worth their time and not one person's time I'm talking like 10 20 30 40 50 people's time to gather these resources to pick, pick you up as their best like warrior to try and take people on so um, sorry, you asked me what, what you should do. Don't think about that, <laughs> pretty much. Don't think about how the fresh, high pressure situation. <laughs> That's what I'd be okay. thinking about. So, <laughs> so Manx goes on to win All Stars, yeah. flawless victory. Yeah. We find out he's been listening to classical music the entire time. Yes. Do you have any other any suggestions oh, as for rituals? Anything that you, you might recommend a there's, player there's, going There, there is one, one really, really important thing, and I think a lot of people forget how important it is, and this is really serious, so I'm, I'm not even going to make... No, I'm joking. <laughs> Hydration. Drinking water. Mm -hmm. Make sure you stay hydrated, gamers, because hydration is the key to maximum efficiency. There's, there's, one, thing that, so, um, <laughs> there's one thing that comes to mind as well. It's true. That's like, it is. You know, you've got, you got to make sure you're drinking. Everyone's got their gamer juice these days and the fuel that they have, but drink some water. <laughs> Keep yourself nice and healthy. I had a clan called... Uh, yeah. DL, Divine Legion, that reached out to me as well. And uh, part of the stuff they told me was that they had a phrase when they were doing PVM of, an, of whenever they wanted an item, it became like a, a bit of a, a thing. They'd say this phrase and suddenly they'd, they'd start getting stuff. So they got, for example, two armadillo chest plates and an armadillo crossbow, which in this tournament final is like so amazing. Is this something they typed in game? I think it was something they just said on Teams, but oh. like with the Rune Shark it's and like uh, the, the Kira. Duel. There it is. I was asking what it was. I couldn't yeah, remember it in my head. Yeah. But doodle, yeah, something like that. So maybe they've just got to think of a phrase like that okay. and say it before they go in. <laughs> Perfect. It's Stay hydrated. Work. There awesome. we go. Cheers. Nearly struggled opening. That would be really awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> Cheers. Oh. <laughs> So, right. we're still waiting um, to jump into the next round well, of it, the it, one versus ones. It does look like we've got a thumbs up from Mod Rock. Oh, really? Thank you, Rock. We're going to head into no, game. No, that was just because he's happy we're hydrated now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're, we're still going to head into game, regardless of what the outcome is. Let's go have a look at what's in game, guys. Probably players waiting to there get we go. the next fight. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're so, I mean, so we're, we're straight yeah, up We can see Manked against Chess Press. This is going to be an interesting fight. Mank opting for the full hybrid as before. He's very, very confident with it. Obviously, Archie touched earlier on the fact that Mank managed to get all the way through All-Stars. Flawless victory. Has done very well in previous tournaments. And uh, has spent a lot of his time at this tournament actually PKing. Um, normally, he'll focus a lot of time on streaming. But given the fact it was the final tournament, I believe that he spent... Wow, a 49 straight away. That's not what he spent, but that's what he did. He decided to spend his first few days um, actually focusing on training his account, streamed pure PKing then for three days straight, I believe, mm -hmm. and then the last few days of Deadman has just been about having fun and feasting on people with his clan. So nice. two things right. here. Um, this is an upgrade. Is that an armadillo uh, plate skirt? So yeah, the armadillo plate skirt Big has upgrade. huge major defense on it, which is going to be hard for Mank to actually catch those freezes, but at the same time, it's not showing a problem He's too. dominating. Yeah. He's uh, getting some huge hits out right now, and catching that freeze essentially off the bat is really important because that means that chest press, look at his inventory right now, he only has melee and range, so if he's frozen in place constantly by Manx, huge miasmic barrages with that staff, um, he's not going to be able to, you know, to move and use that. That's that Warhammer, use a special attack. He's got vengeance, but it's not really helping too much. Manx looking like he's got an almost full inventory of supplies right now. Has he eaten yet? I don't think he's eaten, apart from maybe a brew dose. Yeah, um, I think it's just literally one brew dose, whether that was a pre-brew or Ooh. not. Ooh, that, that being said, that that's big. He's got to chuck some brews for that. Get his was that a special back attack up? that it just was, came through in it here? It was. So his defense is going to be reduced now. That's a special effect of the status Warhammer. Works similar to a Dragon Warhammer, I believe. Yep. Um, reduces your opponent's overall defense. That's There's the another spec. one. I believe that was. I don't know if that was considered a hit or not, whether it was a recall Mank ended up taking. But we definitely have one hit. So Mank's going to have to be a little bit cautious. But he is definitely um, on the upper. Uh, of his opponent in terms of his uh, his invent, I believe he's actually been able to um, to eat food, but it's, he's got food on the floor still potentially, yeah. just because of how many items he's got in his invent. He's so. also using the blood barrages to heal himself. Yeah, which is probably why he's been able to stay such high hit points the entire way through. He also opted to, to smash out his special attacks as soon as possible, catching that vital freeze right there yeah. as his opponent is flying in with that stat Warhammer. He also got himself a Dragon Crossbow as Blazer's team did lock down Dragon Slayer 2, which is essential in farming the Rune Dragons to get this iconic weapon. Of course, the bolts, Oh Bolt C, we just saw a spec going off there, which uh, hits a really powerful hit. Oh my god, a 30 as well through the Protect Melee, I believe, right there. Chest yeah. press now down to one sharp. It's going to take him a lot to come back. I think Mant has got this in the bag, to be honest now. Yeah, I think a combination of really, really nice freezes, not splashing all the time, as well as some really good bolt specials, which, yep. you know, I've got to give credit to the fact that they've got Dragon Crossbow, which means they can use the Dragon Arrows, more range strength, more ranged accuracy overall, and then those higher hits. Just being able to completely train Chest Press, and this is where it shows you that that range tank meta 
isn't always the best thing because if you are going up against a good opponent, if you're not focusing your prayers properly and switching gear in and out, there it is. just yeah, like that, you're going to fall. Very, very well done. Great, Great job for Manked and a, a nice upgrade couple mistakes, well. though, Manked. And you can see he's as, as composed as ever, but if he was going up against a skilled hybrid, I think he might appreciate that was a practice round. Maybe he was taking that opponent a little bit lightly. Well, but an interesting strategy. I'm just going to touch on Manked's strategy real quick. Unloading the specs immediately. So... By doing this, you're building back your special attack. You'll get a fifth spec by the end of the fight. Mm -hmm. You're also making your opponent go through a lot of food immediately, which is getting in their mm -hmm. head, making them think, I'm losing quickly, I'm losing too quickly. They start to panic. Yeah, well, it's, before, it's, very you know, clever. it's a game of momentum, so you want to try, you know, catch that upper hand so you're forcing your opponent to eat, which is wasting them game ticks. They can't actually do any damage back. We saw a 20-something star bash with the Azuril star. I mean, Abdullah needs it as well, because it looks like he's falling behind in terms of supplies. He's got, you know, his opponent's still three sharks, one Karamban, and a sip of uh, brew dose. Yeah, he has no so special attack left either right now, Abdullah, so he needs to catch, catch the, uh, the freeze underneath, step under, and now he's going to come down to a... Uh, a huge game of RNG. If he can come back from this, I'll be very surprised, but unfortunately for him, the guy against him, LMFAO, seems to have quite a bit of uh, resources left. And he also had Vengeance, which is probably the, the defining factor here. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that obviously as well, he's got 121 combat, he's got maxed gear pretty much. So this is like a tank's worst nightmare, pretty much. Oh, sorry, a hybrid's worst nightmare right now. And, and you can tell he's a little bit, um, I'm going to say, hot-headed, LMFAO, because his name's actually LMFAO, you bad lol. So oh. he's enjoying himself right now. Uh, yeah. He's, he's yeah. winning with PKO, man. <laughs> he's winning with laughter. And after this fight, it looks like we get to hop over to Spark Mac. So we'll see how he's doing. That was a big upgrade as well for Alan well, getting himself the BLS. Yeah, very respectable. Gets himself the BLS over the stat wall, which is that. huge too. We have Spark, Spark Mac, Mac leading the tribe and uh, doing some great DDing underneath. He's actually think... opted for, for full tribe but in max gear. He's even got the, the DFS too. So he's, he's gone really hard this past week. Yeah, he's taking like out a very in. powerful opponent. Absolutely, and we've joined in at a perfect time as well because it does seem like he's about to take down that powerful opponent and, uh, and maybe snag himself a few little pieces of, of gear in terms the of infinity upgrade. boots. You might take that. I mean, it would definitely help him in terms of his mage. Would he want to sacrifice the, the event for it though? I think it's worth it. I think that the thing with magic is that it's great when it actually works. I know that sounds really obvious, but when magic splashes, you are at such a disadvantage because you're putting yourself a at such sword. a... There's there a nice swing, wow. taking that down. <laughs> but it, I see some god swords in here as well, actually. When you go for the magic hits, you're, you're in much less defensive gear because you want to get the magic accuracy, which means you're much more prone to ranged and melee hits. That's two combat styles that you can take more damage from. So it is a, it is a big cost that you have to do. Wizard Boots just didn't care at that point. Look how much food was left. Just let his opponent die to the gas. And it seems like a very similar situation here as well. Uh, I come correct, ended up... Um, you know, winning that fight with pretty relative mm -hmm. ease. All right. Amount of HP yep. left. Quite a few people died there. Um, we have seen, I believe it looks like, well, I can't see him on the list anymore, so we're trusting Bodhi has died. We're trusting Bellis, uh, a previous winner, has died. Really? And so did uh, Abdullah, too. We just saw him in Yep, mm -hmm. yep, we did. We're, we're waiting on an updated list, but uh, it's been a very dramatic 1v1 so far. Um, typical stuff, though. You, you see Manked going through with a very strong setup, yep. the Tribrid with the VLS. I think we can probably expect to see a top four with a very similar setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think from what I've seen so far, Manked, of all the fights, Manked was like the one of the cleanest. Uh, we, we caught one of the tail ends of a fight where um, the, the, the chap had a full invent of food still, so obviously he steamrolled, but we're looking at completely different brackets in terms of combat and gear there, whereas Manked against his opponent was, was pretty well matched in terms of levels and, and gear, yep. and he completely dominated that fight so he looks to be on absolute form okay i reckon he's got that classical music on full blast right now <laughs> and uh he's just in the zone and i'm looking forward to, to seeing how he progresses through the rest of this yeah, tournament um, now yeah. we saw spark mac as well another familiar face and, yeah uh, he doesn't really he's a pk he, he, he was really... stacked spark mac has got some gear yeah yep. he, he doesn't normally do hybriding or tribriding very much so to see him you know taking part in the tournament and still looking really strong and doing the, un the dd underneath as well might be interesting to see how far he gets um i believe he was fed by the clan gg as well uh -huh. um, as well as probably his, his live stream and friends that he's got through there so um he could definitely go go really far right now i would say his opponent looked like it was probably the strongest yeah uh azurial staff i think of vls it was Aaron's. a tribe reverse tribe yep. so yep. he came out as the, the yep. better pk of there yep. and again it comes down to again like we said before the whole uh the nerves spark max someone who streams daily to, to thousands of viewers of and he's been uh in, in the limelight for a long time as a content creator so he probably doesn't really feel that pressure he's just having fun right now enjoying himself yeah. and uh doing what he can for the tribe I can imagine him right now in voice if he's streaming, which I imagine he is, he's probably shouting, let's go Tim, let's go Tim, let's go. <laughs> it's an interesting actually uh, thing that you pointed out there, Ian, that whether you're having fun or whether you're taking this very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I think going into a 1v1, you can either have a laugh with it, right? Yeah. 
or you can maybe compose yourself in a way like Mank does, mm -hmm. or you can get really serious like I probably would. Sweat dripping, like metal music <laughs> playing, like every Ooh. click is heavier than it needs to be. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. All right, anyway, sorry, the next round is ready. Let's hop into that. <laughs> All right, there we rounds. go, Robert, making it through. Yeah, we have some really sick gear. The defensive of Bandos has probably been helping him a lot here. Not to say that it's been carrying him, because he seems to be doing a pretty good job, but i definitely say it's got um, some factor in terms of his, uh, his success currently. And we've seen this opponent he's fighting. Um, I believe we watched this guy in a previous round, and he's, he's looking pretty strong. The stat Warhammer, he's not even going to bother with that Carol's Leather top. You're not going to wow. typically bother... Oh, this is, this is a... That was a uh, nice pay, a damage exchange there. Both players with Vengeance that Robert managed to get in the hit through the prayer as well. Yeah, you're not going to bother with the anti-magic defense if your opponent isn't using Mage. Mm -hmm. um, that said, he's just put the Carol Top on. An interesting strat because Robert's going to keep that Bandos on the entire time. Whip out the VLS very quick. He just has to do a one-click spec. There it is. He can, he can get those 33s out. But Tweak does have the Venge. So does Robert, actually. This is a great, yeah. great matchup. So like I said before, Blazers were able to uh, to beat out Rot inside the um, uh, in Lunar Diplomacy and take it for themselves for a little bit. And it looks like Rot right now, Ooh. the bench combo, almost getting a KO there, but deciding to eat instead and conserve his supplies. He could have got a hit in before he decided to eat. He was a little bit late on the eat there. But uh, nonetheless, Robert looking really strong right now, and that Bandos making a, a huge advantage as well. Looks like we've got a Manx fight coming up as well. Maybe we can switch to that, and then we'll switch back to Robert in a little bit. So it looks like Mankta right now is in the tribe set setup versus a guy who's also tribe setting and he's actually losing to Mystic. So whoever this guy is, the, the sick kid, I'll call him. Or oh, sorry, ST1, my bad. I'll let <laughs> sit for a second. Um, he's doing it much better, actually. He's got six sharks. Actually, no, it's, uh, to be fair, Mankta does have one shark advantage right now, getting the DD underneath and trying to turn that into uh, you know, more damage. He's got one spec that's come up as well, 20% spec. Unfortunately for his opponent, uh, does not have the, uh, the stat Warhammer, so... Manx making the comeback, yeah. as he does. He's, he does have a severe gear advantage here, so ST did very well for the gear he had. I'm very um, surprised he's and done, done stat so And stat-wise, well. they look just about similar, I mean, we didn't but catch, Manx yeah. should have this one in the bag. Yeah, we didn't catch the start of the fight. That could have literally been a Statius Warhammer special attack on Manx whilst he had Protect From Range in Mage gear on, um, or Protect From Range with Range gear. So it could have been that which made up that difference in terms of HP, but they do look pretty even now. Some really nice hits coming against Manked. Opting to use the DD method, uh, obviously when his opponent's frozen, he's able to step underneath. It's really useful because he can switch out gear without his opponent necessarily being able to see what Manked's doing. Doesn't know which prayers to use or which gear to go into. Really helps him. And it also means that Manked isn't taking as much damage because he can normally get two hits to every one that he takes back as well. I think having that zero staff advantage, having... Wow, well, that was a 45 of the status Warhammer. Sorry to intrude that in, but when those numbers come I just can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's understandable, Ben. I mean, a 45 spring for, for a Saz Warhammer, especially versus Manx, who was up until now actually doing really, really well and managed to come back and have quite advantage with that 45, two sharks down, and uh, suddenly ST1 is back in the game and he's managed to catch Manx, a uh, freeze away from him. Now, Manx is not eating any food for some reason, back into eating right now, but having that, you know, that Arims, that Zero Star, having the Mage. He's got the book, Dragon Crossbow advantage as well. He's yes. Got some big advantages here. Having the Arims and the, uh, the Zero Star from the Mage's book particularly means that those freezes are almost always going to catch, especially versus Mystic. Sticks, whereas ST1 oh, has to rely on a lot better RNG. But yeah, the 34 through the prayer, huge for Manx. It's coming down to the wire right now. Manx has two food left. He can't risk it too low right now. And you've got the first hit in. It's time to eat up. And now it's completely out of food one. now. These next few hits are going to determine the, the way that this fight shapes out to be. Will it be Manx going through or will it be STI? We're going to have to wait a few more hits to find out. Manx managed to get a freeze. ST1. ST1, sorry. Yep, yep, okay. right. Oh, all right. Well, let's be so particular in this heated moment of this absolute <laughs> epic battle between two complete there it is. dominating Manx forces. Well Mank takes it through against ST1. Yeah, again, the benefit there of having that, that extra freeze advantage, being able to catch those freezes, meant the Manx could, you know, I think three or four times in a row there, catch those DDs and be able to secure the win. Uh, very close for him, though, and uh, probably having him a little bit shaking, a little bit nervous yeah. in the next round. We have yep. Robert versus Tweakster now, back into this fight, and Robert showing that the power of the Bandos is more than enough to take a huge win, and he has so many sharks left. A bunch of recalls that he's also collected along the way, and those recalls, of course, will be taken through per round, and it gives you a couple of sharks worth per recall, which is a, is a huge yeah. benefit as well. Every damage that gets dealt to you, a little bit gets dealt back. Robert playing the smart, keeping his distance, keeping Prey Melee up. He knows he can't die unless he gets a lucky uh, stat Warhammer spec. One content creator that we, we know is actually still alive from the looks of it is Mika that we haven't tuned into. So I'm quite curious to see how he's doing. Maybe we'll find out next round. But Robert should be taking this one. Three food left. There's the VLS. 
No prayer left. Just let to finish things up. One dose, and there it is. A nice little slash to the chest against Tweester, and he is down and out. Here we've got Ozzy James against uh, I Come Correct again, and it looks like Ozzy James is in a better position. Full HP. His opponent already saying good fight. Going to be running out of prayer very soon as well, but That's it's only going to take the next, uh, the next hit for him to progress through. Yeah, one of the cut for members guy in the uh, the uh, Rot Alliance, but he's not actually opted for the Vengeance. Interestingly, he's gone for the uh, the full tribe set up and he's doing looking very stacked at the same time looks like mika won his fight too for those wondering at okay. home so mika is also through right now we have gurk blob versus zelinu and uh <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce that just, name. I, that was i'm just gonna say real quick X. these guys make their names difficult so that when they're being called out in a pile yeah. uh, it's difficult to call yeah. out their names <laughs> pretty much and looks like uh, Mr. X. The 40 KO, to, yeah. though. That, 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 that was a comeback. Really Dude, close. the PP weapons, people underestimate them. Even without a special attack, they can still, you know, Every single fight that, that we've seen so far pretty much has came down to the wire. And I know that we said that so many times last tournament, but like both of these players have oh, no food. This is huge. That was 23. That is huge. That guy now has a VLS addition over his stat Warhammer. And having that VLS, having four special attacks, 25% spec, which all roll off 25% of your opponent's defense level. He barely made it through level. as well. 23 it's, uh, HP. It's, it's massive, insane. man. We also saw an upgrade of an Aram's body there. And, and also winning a fight is going to give you a little bit of adrenaline. You're going to feel a little, a little bit better about yourself, mm -hmm. especially when you're beating a formidable opponent. You're going to go into the next round with a little bit of confidence. Yeah. Um, so that was a very interesting round indeed. We saw Mika went through, we saw Manked went through. Um, did we see what happened to Spark Mac there? I hope Spark, Spark went through. Went through, as as well. through and, yep. we saw, and we saw Robert win as Robert well. As so well. there you go. The four recognizable names as far as uh, we're concerned, but there are still so many others in this, in this fight. Yeah, we saw a CT member as well. We've not really talked about too much about Cutthroat either. They decided to join the huge Rot Alliance as well. They have like a 30 to 40 man group. Mm -hmm. There are an 07 clan that's been around for many years right now, led by Christy. Um, and really a lot of people on that team have played them before. So. Um, really must be really exciting for them as well. They, I think they've won or come second place once. That was with Ditter Bitter, who I'm not too sure if he's still in this tournament yet. I'm sure we'll have confirmation sometime soon. I, I, th I think I, he, I uh, he's he died. He, he fell. Did. He got, yeah. he got in the first round. Yeah, he did die. Because he was Looks one of those like, uh, guys that they, uh, they fed, so. We're actually ready to go into the next round. Oh, ready. Oh, okay. All right, beautiful. Let's go. Straight into it and, uh, and find out what's going on. All right, starting with Spark Mac, who's now looking like, what? A he's very got the difficult fight. The Armadale chest plate. Um, thing as well. Was that actually Spark Mag? Demon Spark? I yep, but, but he's got a Rune Crossbow versus an ACB, starting out with a 44 for uh, H-S-Z-A-S-L-Y-R-B-R-E. -S whoever, whoever this H... Whoever, <laughs> whoever Spark this H against H, H okay? Uh, it has, has a little bit... Yeah. Okay, just call him. Just call him. Whoever Mr. H is, he's an absolute beast. He's got the Imbued Heart, which you get from Superior, which increases your magic level at the start of the fight, which is absolutely massive, because you need that in those freezes. He's decided he's just to opt it there. Now. Yes, he's probably waiting to start to get that momentum so we can actually make the most of it, but having to brew back up again. And uh, he's got the, the Sears Ring switch. Uh, this might be Inia, for all we know. This, this could, guy's very good. This could very tell. well be Inia, the frontline member that we were talking about before. Huge um, who, before who won last time round and then came second in wow, the Wow, look at the well. difference straight away. Bear in mind, this fight just happened. It started around about 15 seconds ago, no more than that. Spartanak is already down to just two sharks, one oh crown brand, and a, and a three dose of a brew, as his opponent is still pretty much stacked out in terms of supplies. There and he to, goes. Coming to, back a little bit. To beat Spark now, sorry, to beat Spark now, he's going to actually get himself a, a slight upgrade too. The Armadale chest plate is going to be huge for mage defense, especially when he's got the Carol's top already. Um, but it's going to take a lot for Spark to come back. He needs to catch that freeze, step underneath as he's doing right now, fake a little bit. He's got one spec left, so he does have a bit of potential, but H does get his prayer up right in time and mitigates that damage, catches the freeze back, and now it's all H's game again. Spark out of supplies, out of luck. He's come far, but I don't think he's going to be able to beat this, uh, this tough opponent. Yeah, and we can see that Robert, unfortunately, has just fallen, and we may be able to hop over to Manked immediately after this fight to see how he's doing. Um, but yeah, Spark completely out of food. He's got one brew dose left. No super potions after that. That's going to be him out. I don't think there's any chance of him coming back. Doesn't even have a special. The switches coming in from H are just absolutely insane. He's very Lightning composed. speed. It could be. I don't know, I don't know who it is. Do we have any confirmation of what team they're in or... Or we'll who it may be, that'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, right now, just, uh, just a waiting game, trying to catch that next freeze and spark. Unfortunately for him, he just got destroyed at the start, and uh, once that ball starts rolling, it's like a snowball effect. It just, mm -hmm. just picks up pace. There it is. There it is. And uh, is with that, that being said, yeah, he wasn't able to come back in time, unfortunately. Good fight. Manx versus Sif, and we saw Sif picking up the VLS last fight, actually, another tribrid. But Manx gear does slightly outweigh his, and uh, looking at supplies right now, it looks like Manx is up a shark and half a brew, which is uh, quite, quite big at this point in the game. Yeah. Just and if we look to the left, Oh, I think you just said the same thing. Yep. Top left, we just can see Mika's Mika just won his fight. managed to make it through. So we know Mika's through now. So we're just going to be co concentrating on Manked against Sif. And uh, it does look like Manked has the upper hand here in terms of supplies left over as well. 
Um, as Ian touched earlier a little bit, that SIF has managed to pick up the VLS. Used the specs early on, has one available. Manked, however, still has another two specs available to use here. I'm just going to wait and see how exactly he decides to, uh, to pop those out, because they really are damaging. There's one, unfortunately, hits a zero against all of the, uh, the right gear and prayer on his opponent, yeah. but just unfortunate for him. I'm going to call this... I'm just going to say real quick, there's been Manked versus that H guy in the finals. You think my so? prediction, yeah. I'd like to say that Sif needs to catch the next freeze and then start to, you know, change the pace of the fight, but he's not able to. And Manked going to take this one very easily for him. He's going to get up any advantages here? Any benefits? No, I don't think he is. I think he's got the same gear, if not better gear, than Sif. So, uh, yeah, Manked's going through. Another fan favourite. And uh, we're through to, we've through. done three rounds now almost. So yep. we're down to yep. uh, I, I just top, I don't top 30 something, I think, so, by now. Oh, we don't try to do maths. We wait for people to tell us. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to the next round to be the top 30-something. So uh, we're, we're dwindling down just to a couple of uh, contestants left. Yep. And in no time, we're going to be crowning the, uh, the final DMM winner and with a uh, $20,000 grand prize, aren't we? There it is. So Mank's winning, winning his fight. He's going on very strong. One of the things with Mank is I think he gets better with every fight. That first fight was a nice warm-up for him. Mm -hmm. he, had a, he had a really nice opponent for that. And now he's getting into the serious fights. But he's ready for it. We've got Dragon versus Targ. Um, how's this fight looking? Dragon with a slight advantage, one crown bond left. Targ out of food. Well, Targ does have the, uh, I don't know why he's in Morgan's Doesn't seem that. to ever go well for a Targaryen, so um, it looks like they're <laughs> going to be falling here against uh, Dragon Drags, which is pretty ironic, actually. Really um, close, and uh, luckily for, for Targ as well, I believe he's going to pick yeah. himself up. 47. Wow. A DFS well switch, which Ooh. is much better than the Crystal Shield, and, uh, and a huge upgrade being the best in slot. Uh, shield in the game right now, unless, of course, someone has an Elijah, which I very much doubt. I think but, uh, Corp you know, has no. only been killed a total of uh, four times the entire tournament, so I wow. doubt yeah. that that would a be the case. A team did tell me they were killing Corp, and they said they were able to get potentially a Spirit Shield, but maybe they were sniped in the, in the finals, mm. the multi-phase before this happened. Uh, we have had word that, uh, that Mr. H from the previous round of those insane switches is actually part of Blazers, so Ooh. interesting to know who they actually are. Look at this full Armadil beast. He's doing all right. Might lose very this one though, it's a very hit. close 10 fight. 10 against 5, one hit is going to make this. Whoever wins oh, it. Oh, wow. Advantage. wow! Thanks to the Armadil, there it is. Changing Maze takes it against TI. I mean, that, that DFS again and, uh, and just, you know, outgearing him completely, that's what it comes down yeah. to. But, I mean, Even it, a few HP say, though. Yeah, outgearing him completely, that was, it was yeah. literally a difference of like 6 HP. Mm -hmm. One hit, one person to step out. Yep. Unfortunately, yep. it was the one who got hit. Yep. Right, so what do we know going into this fight? We know we've got Manked, we know we've got Mika. Yep. Right? We, we know, know that we've got Mr. H from Blazers. We do, we do. Uh, a few unfamiliar names. Mm -hmm. And we know we've got a few rounds left. So We've got some, uh, there's a good variety of players in here now. I think the last few fights that we saw there had predominantly people hybrid rather than the tanks. Yeah. It seems like the yeah. tanks have been whittled down and just taken out of the tournament yeah. and just picked apart. They've just been looted and, and left in the dust. Mm -hmm. so. So, so to touch on the, the changes we've made to these tournaments over, over the years, actually, uh, mm -hmm. one of the metas that was so, so strong ah. was the tank range with the full Verax. The Verax, oh, mm -hmm. those so were the days, weren't so they? So strong. We, we decided to it. take out the flail, of yeah. course. Um, uh, a difficult decision because it was kind of our first time saying actually that's that's just way too strong yeah and, and maybe some tank rangers still kind of holding on to their dreams thinking that they can still make it with with such gear but against those skilled tribrids who are able to com compose themselves and actually click well they're not going to stand a chance i mean it's, it's all about that gear as well i think what really gives them the edge is having that imbued heart having the mages book switch having the sears ring imbued all yeah. of that thing all of those little items really add up to make what is actually possible to beat that range tank meta unless you're your opponents you know in full armor deal then it can be quite difficult still to catch a freeze but for the most part it's it's those extra switches which are harder to you know to get to move into and to, and to fake you into but definitely pay off when you do get the uh, the freezers yeah that being said it looks like we're ready to go into the next round so let's uh, let's get things underway and uh, just as a reminder when we do hit into the quarterfinals we're going to be doing each fight one at a time so you should be able to see these progressing through this is a very right. difficult fight here yeah Manx and they will be from uh, this Tata. point onwards both I'm players opt in for a, uh, the full um, hybrid setup. Some really interesting gear choices here. We've got the uh, one of the, the wards. The Malediction, Malediction Ward, which ward. Gives, uh, a one. little bit of defense bonus. Not as, quite as high major uh, offensive bonus as the Major's Book does that Manx has. Yep. But uh, maybe the defense will, will help a little bit too. Both exchange of ELS specs. Manx does hit through Preg. It was on the robes of 32 at that as well, which is pretty huge. And now Tartar, unfrozen, moving around. Catch that freeze and get the DD potentially. But uh, opting to actually not go in for any, any DD is just going to hybrid him straight up and not having a cowardly play as Rakesy uh, described <laughs> it last, last MMO tournament. But Manx doesn't care about that. He's going for the win. He's stepping underneath. He's faking as he steps out to make his opponent pray the wrong thing. And uh, it looks like he's paying off for him. Right now, Manx is up. A little bit of food. And um, 
yeah, it just comes down to these next few specs. It's like Manx also has 85% compared to Tartar -tar -tar XX. I'm not sure about that, really, because it looks like Tartar -tar is doing Ooh, pretty well. Oh, it's through prayer. Supply, so it's going to have to eat a few pieces of food now. The damage just keeps coming in from Manx, so maybe it would balance out very vast, uh, very quickly. Both Manx. players have pieces of Armadil opposite sides, so either one will get an upgrade, depending on who goes through. I was going to say Manx is blessed with RNG, but he just got hit for a 39 and nearly died. Yeah, it's that really not looking good for him now compared to the start of the fight, that's for sure. This Manx. is a fair fight. That's something so interesting with the PvP weapons, you know, they, they have the opportunity to uh, to hit those massive 60s or 50s and or even 30s and 40s, which, you know, completely changes the dy dynamic and switches out the momentum. And Tata right now going for a spec, but actually faking it. Double fakey and actually catches them off prayer, but Manx only tanks a zero, so good for him. Catches the freeze. 24 on the Armadil chest. If Manx gets his Armadil chest plate, he's going to be so... It's going to be so hard to catch a fan. The, the classic Manx well. food the on the floor. Too. He's just resupplied. Manx got full, full yes, food Yes, I was going to say, the reason why he looked like he was a bit, wow. a bit short is because without enough inventory space... It's a 54. 54. On the right prayer as well, so he deserves it, but I, I think it's going to be very hard for yeah. Tartar -tar X to, uh, to come Manx back. Manx is in the zone. The, uh, it's going to be impossible to beat him when he's like this. And these, if, if this guy Tartar -tar isn't that, that clan, they are literally both mortal enemies, pretty much. These, these teams are fought every single tournament, every well, three months, for years on end. Is it Tata or is it EX? Because he's got both They're, in, they're in an alliance together, so it they're could be okay. a member that, you know, is, is representing both of them uh, and such. All right. Well, we can see uh, Mika is still winning his fight, or actually he's in a fight, but he is absolutely smashing his opponent from the sounds of it. Yeah, we Perhaps we'll Mika. have time to pop over. Yeah, we, I think we've, we've got, Manx got this one in the bag, to be honest, and uh, Mika right now there looking like he has, yes, a lot of supplies extra. Always going to pick up. Look at those recoils from southeast. That is going to be huge. Obviously taking those through every single round to have a little bit more damage, which dwindles away the opponent's supplies. And uh, Mika now, you know, just playing it calmly, having a five shark advantage advantage excuse me and he should be able to win this one we did just get word that manked won as we switched off from the fight so uh i think it was pretty uh, yeah, yeah inevitable as, as was mentioned mm -hmm. uh this fight however it, it does look like it's going to go pretty well in terms of mika's favor if he can just keep the damage coming in but if it, all it's going to take right now we've said before two or three hits one hit even from the vls without the spec but on the right prayer could potentially mean the difference between having three to one sharks mm -hmm. yeah they've actually both have the same gear the only advantage that mika really has is the armadil chest play which is it's still a pretty big advantage compared to a carol's top um but i think honestly mika's got this one in the bag and he's doing a great job of switching to his tank every single time to try and make sure he's mitigating as much damage as possible again getting those step unders stepping away just enough space where his opponent can't melee him back uh, going for the Staff Bachelor with a panic there, with a misclick, but uh, it happens to the best of us. And um, unless Southeast right now on 39 hit points can get some huge hits, he's got no special attacks and no massive window to be able to hit that. And having a Staff Bachelor himself back and forth as well. But it looks like Miki's going to bring this one home and uh, finish off with a quick Bolt KO on around 10 hit points. Yep, and again, just, just going to mention, Mika and Manked are probably both streaming right now, so definitely worth opening up their streams, watching from their perspective, just to see how good these guys are. You may notice that Mika, whilst doing this fight, is doing a little bit of gardening as well. He's just won it. But if you are wondering why there are flowers popping up, we've spoke a lot about um, Stand Under and how effective that can be when your opponent is frozen. One of the ways to prevent that from being an advantage for your opponent is to plant mithril seeds, which then turn into flowers, because it forces you one tile in an opposite direction. Wow. Changing Maze just ended that up was... winning there. Clutch fight. That was actually pretty close. That, that was that down. down. Well. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Mafeo's gone down. Um, but yeah, that, that's the one way to just avoid it. So I thought I'd let you know for those of you that might not have seen it before, um, just so that you're aware. All right, so we now believe, I now believe we get into the quarterfinals. I believe so. So we should be seeing one right. fight happening at a time, um, which will be obviously great for, for you guys at home so to follow and also now. for us to be able to, uh, so to run through. All those guys we just saw there, they all got membership. All got one year they of did. membership, yeah. Oh, fantastic. At least they're going home with something today yeah. after a week's worth of uh, playing Risk Game. Yep. I mean, that's like a solid, what, 100 and something dollars? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I think it's even more, I would go for the title. I'd say I came top 16 in the yeah. last the last Dead Man. I, I've seen a few Twitter buyers of that in there, yeah? to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like mean, to yeah, it's respectable. Yeah, I'd definitely. Put that in it's my a good bio. achievement, yeah. Yeah. Um, so going into these finals, of course, we can see very, very similar gear. And each of these players ha has killed their opponents leading up to this point, of course, getting upgrades along the way, as we've mentioned. So Manked being a, a serious upgrade to the Armadil and then to the DFS, looking very strong. Mm -hmm. We've talked about him a lot in this tournament, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to sound so biased, but we have seen him win a dead man tournament. We've seen him go flawless and win all-stars. And we've also seen a rather peculiar strategy from Manked. Ian, can you talk a little bit about what he does with the render self? Yeah, sure. So uh, in game, you have a command which is render cell, which allows you for your character to not be seen uh, by yourself. So you can step underneath, and that means you can also see whoever, whatever your opponent is switching to, what prayers they've got up, all that kind of stuff, all about seeing your own gear. So it takes a bit of time to get used to. Um, you have to know exactly like what you're wearing and be aware of what prayers you've got on at all times and such. 
but uh, Manx, you know, putting the hours, like all these teams do, to be honest, not just Blazers, but every team really has weeks in advance where they practice, go to the Dual Arena, um, fight each other off and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and see, you know, how they can improve and, and really, you know, see whether the, the, those slight benefits of, like, doing step-unders and such, that gives you a huge advantage because it's always about, like I said before, creating that momentum. When you start making your opponent eat and start catching them off prayer, and that's when you, uh, you create the window to really get far ahead. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah interesting, interesting strategy. Oh, we're beginning to give them word that the, uh, the next round is ready. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will now be moving in to the Dead Man Summer 2019 Finals Quarter Final segment. <laughs> that was a mouthful. It was indeed. <laughs> All right. So, here we go, guys. We can see, um, listing off some of the names, we have three members from the Blazer team. Uh, and they didn't have too, too big a, a team. One Rot, we have two Lit, we have Mika, who I believe plays with Lit typically, and we have GG slash Lit. So, uh, quite a big representation from Lit. Only one Rot made it through when they had the most numbers. Um, and Blazers actually looking very, very strong with Menk as, as one of I think of Lit were actually technically higher in terms of number according to the system. Oh, yeah. that 47. Only by like 20 or so, but they had pretty good numbers here. That was huge. Another VLS coming up on the right prem, unfortunately a zero for him. Looks like H right now is doing uh, doing really well, changing the moment, down a couple of food, but all it's going to take is a couple of those big VLS specs to, to have it in his favour. There's one of them, 27, not too bad. Going for a second on the right prem, 54, Ooh. that is huge! Spec H again. going down to like 10 HP right there, but catching his prey mage back off again, the right tick. Wow, another 39, 39 straight after that as well. That is insane. We've just seen basically near enough 100 points of damage yeah. being dealt in, in less than five seconds. And, and that there is, is like five sharks. Yeah. And, and to, to note that whoever wins this fight is guaranteed money. So getting spec a 50 and then a 40, Oh yeah. you, you are absolutely trembling. This is the difference between making money or not. $1,000 is a lot of money. Um, I would be shaking my boots if I was H right now. <laughs> I wouldn't even Change be here. Change is doing so well. <laughs> It looks like the next fight after this that we'll be going into is uh, is whichever is the um, the wand icon. But as you can see, just to our right, we do have Manked against Mika. They're gonna, both going to be facing up against each other. So two big content creators clashing the titans. To see Mika make it this far as well after trying for so many tournaments is, uh, is really respectful. I'm really happy for him as well. But back to this fight, H right now, looking like he's up quite a bit of food. Uh, no bruise left though. Change going down to only like three. A barrage KO. No way. That combo. <laughs> that he's it is it's not happy. He says easy. H is saying. They've got, oh, wow. they've got big We like that. So we got we got to flex. Them, we like a little bit of character. Well done. Uh, we have Matt here. Matt is that Matt? Matt, Matt Slayer. Slayer. Matt Slayer. So Matt Slayer is one of the GG guys who reached out to me, actually. Uh, to Matt Slayer is listed as part of Rot, according to the Okay, so yes, maybe it's, uh, it's a meme, like his name backwards, um, unfortunately. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Matt, though, because he did reach out to me with some information about um, his team and such. He always did a really good, good job at doing so. But uh, we have Rot here versus JD, and JD's from Blazers. So again, these guys do not like each other. Um, the guy Slayer, level 122 combat, the Rot member, does have a slight advantage gear-wise, I think. Oh, it's a, it's a mage, but no. They're both range They're tanks. Both range tanks. I was wondering why I had the zero staff there for a second. I was like, well, like, why is he bringing them? Probably pop it in there in case he's wanting to, you know, increase that magic defense. Yeah, exactly. Against the hybrid opponent, bit of tank, I suppose, to switch in between yeah. hits and try and fake his opponent out. But uh, this is going to be a, a range tank fight. Oh, oh, oh. combo! Almost oh, I thought that was it. KO'd. That could have been it if you just hit <laughs> a tiny bit higher fraction, then that would have been the, uh, the enough enough amount. Um, you don't really see. KOs in these no, kind of I, I, I thought I got excited by numbers, but I've just heard s new sounds from Archie. I didn't think. I've <laughs> definitely made those sounds before, Ben. <laughs> that is going to be on Reddit, and I'm uh, I'm going to I'm going to replay that clip and send it to you on WhatsApp. I'm downvoting it. <laughs> All right. Um, and just to point out, guys, you might notice that the the finale um, designed by I, I want to say it might be Mod West, but I don't want to get this wrong. We go by. Uh, Mace, Wand, Sword, and then Expo. Just in case you're curious what's on the ground there. So we started out with the Mace, oh, we're now with the Wand. Then we're going to go into the, the Sword, which looks like it's the Mika versus Manked fight up next. And then the Expo. Crossbow. I don't know if he's mentioned the clans aren't 100% accurate either okay. in these fights, but uh, I think it's safe to say that the most likely the, uh, the range tank right now is probably, probably from Rot since he does have Vengeance as well. Um, but looks like at the moment, I'd say food advantage right now is oh, probably for nice Mr. Slayer. Hit, then. 37, which is pretty decent for a non-spec wow. bolt, followed by 33. Uh, he's doing a really good job, and I, th I think it, it does look like, you know, Matt definitely has an upper hand, I think, here in terms of the overall gear. He has the armor deal, which is obviously going to help him when he goes into ranged. And when they're doing predominantly ranged hits, 
Although, um, you know, JD is doing a pretty damn good job of keeping himself in this with the melees that he's managed to, uh, to swing in at the right times. So if I can just point something out quickly, we have JD versus Matt here. And JD with the Carols, Matt with the Armadil, the, two, the biggest disadvantage that they have. I think one of the strategies that Matt might like to, to try to take here is to switch to his Torags, which he seems to be doing on every off hit, and then switch to his Armadil for every offensive hit. But JD seems to be doing a pretty good job uh, at keeping the attacks relatively on the same tick, which is making it very difficult for Matt to use his advantage at all. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly what's going on right now. And uh, so as well as that, the spec coming in 34 through the prayer and through the tank gear. That's so lucky for Matt right there. JD now to free food for Matt's free food. It's very close, coming down to the wire to be honest. But special attack wise right now, JD does have 30% spec. Getting a big hit there. He's going to wait for the opportune moment. If he makes this earlier spec hit a 50 to a 60, then it's it's his win. If it hits a zero, he could very much lose the fight. It comes down to this spec right here. He just went for the opportune moment to actually use it. And uh, again, constantly trying to fake out his opponents. His opponent keeps praying the wrong thing. But it uh, looks like Matt knows he's got the, pre the, the VLS ready and keeping his prep as well. Well, just like that, I think I think JD has managed to pull this through. JD with the upper hand still got one Karambo one left compared to Matt with no food, only seven HP, doing everything possible within his powers to make sure he doesn't fall. Yep. But that's it. He's taken it. Was very quick the bench combo. Full armor deal as well now going in the hands of JD, JD gets, gets the next he round. Gets a, he gets a huge benefit there of the full armor deal, of course, especially versus any of the majors that are currently left. Our next fight is Tanner from high school. I hate that guy. We also have Yar, <laughs> who is uh, level 121 combat, and uh, looks like, again, we have two tribers fighting it out. Gear wise, looks like we have uh, Lit against Lit slash GG as well. So, um, yeah, okay. very interesting. So, to so see these guys might be out. one of the smaller teams within. Yeah, like, I believe be Tanner from, from high school is uh, is representing GG, but also potentially Lit. I think Lit were with yeah, because they're an amalgamation. Right? They're in some kind of alliance, aren't they? Uh, and I see I, 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 mist I mistook the expo on the floor for a sword. So this is actually the next fight. The last <laughs> one is in fact Meng versus That's Mika. That's okay. Yeah. So uh, t t it, whose could be potentially? Uh, we said before. Inya, who won the last tournament and, the, and second place in the rerun, he is playing for Lit, so he might, he might one of these glass few members left, we're not too sure yet. It could be Dead Bossy himself, one of the, the leader of Lit. It could be Voss. As for GG, they have a few members that they've also uh, decided to bring to the table. Um, so, I mean... It, it, <laughs> Tanner from high school seems to be doing a really good job of just keeping damage. It's like four hits in a row now. It's been non-stop in terms of l quite literal barrages as well. He hasn't eaten yet, and he's using blood barrages just for the fun of it. The 37 of prayer, though, gives uh, Yar a bit of a, a way back into this fight. Here's his breathing space. This is his time now to bring yeah. this back, because he, he can't just be sat there constantly taking damage. He needs to catch that freeze, though. He's made Tanner brew up a little bit, but he doesn't manage to catch it, because Tanner gets the armadil play ball in right in time, and doing a fantastic job of being calm, Switching to the right gear at the right moment, and a VLS spec on the right prayer, but only a 15 or 40 for him. One Catching this freeze is just so difficult. One of the things that Yaya is doing very well, actually, is his movement. If you watch him, he's not, he's not really sitting still at all. Um, right now he's frozen, obviously, but he's doing well to keep moving. And really Tanner is kind of just retaliating. Yeah, it's a really great job to, uh, to help you buy time, especially if someone is looking to switch between different styles. Obviously, to hit with melee, you have to be within melee range. And if you're constantly on the move and your opponent runs towards you, then there's a quite a high chance that they're going to go for melee. It might also be a fakie, but it gives you that few seconds extra that you wouldn't normally have to switch into the protect from melee prayer. And what matters here is how many food they managed to, to keep from their last fight. So both players are picking up food off the floor still. Um, this could be it. There could be a couple of sharks still left for each player, but this seems relatively uh, fair match, to be completely honest. Even the gear and the stats, it's all very fair. I'd say that Tanner right now has got a slight advantage of that big VLS spec as well coming in. He has 30% spec, so does Yar. Whoever's next VLS spec hits big is going to really dictate the pace. But Tanner being frozen away from Yar, and now it's a mage range fight once again, both faking and doing their best. And look at look how like, low HP they're sitting as well. Yar going right down to like 10 HP. Every single time you go that, that low, just you know, not eating a little bit sooner, just save you a couple of ticks sometimes. That's, you know, do as much damage output as possible. So, you know, those, those few seconds that you can save really make the difference at the end when it can come down to the wire. Yep. Would that be something that you would uh, consider to be an act, you know, a solid tactic? Maybe not always opting to eat if you're, the full, or do if you think it's, it's better too? If you're feeling confident and you're still and you're calm, then yeah, it could definitely be beneficial to say low HP. So you're still like got the benefit of the range potion, the super combat, for example. But right now, Yar just uh, going ham right now. <laughs> Yar, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I said that on Tana, um, but. Food-wise, Tana still is, has got quite an advantage at the moment, and uh, catching that DD underneath, Yar ready to go for the, uh, the, the VLS, and switching to the mage, then to the range, and um, I don't know if Yar's going to be able to come back in the butt. Maybe the Star Bash might give him a little chance. He's got this freeze right now. It's so important for him. Goes to the VLS spec instead. 
Goes back to the freeze. Can he fake it? Can he catch the freeze? He tries to, and he catches it. Steps underneath. That is beautiful from yeah. him. Tanner actually opted to use Blood Barrage rather than Ice Barrage. Maybe he knew his opponent was gonna, currently immune to the freeze mm -hmm. effect, but he actually did manage to catch that. So if he was able to freeze at that point, it could have helped him. This now looks like this fight has completely swung again. There's going to be taking at least two food down from Tanner. Yoz definitely brought it back, but is it going to be enough oh. for him to be able to win this fight? That 38 on the right prayer definitely helps Yar quite a bit. But Tanner catching that freeze, stepping underneath once again. It's now a free food to free food. And uh, it's, I mean, Yar needs to catch this freeze, but he's opting instead to sit in the, uh, the range tank gear and try and do as much damage as possible because Tanner is prioritizing his mage prey and his, and his defense gear. Um, but now another freeze being caught from both players, stepping a few steps away from each other. Looks like two sharks versus three sharks remaining, special attack wise, 20% versus 20%. He's just waiting a few more seconds now to get that VLS spec, which is the big opportunity to hit 50s to hit 60s. Wow. And um, yeah. Yaw's switching is actually very impressive right now. He's getting four ways, one tick, no problem. Tana oh, there's money on the line, there's serious money on the line with this. <laughs> that was a slow walk. You almost just want to want to watch this one. Uh, Yar right now looking like he's out of food, out of supplies, but he's 62 HP, that's enough to try and come back and catch this freeze, but he doesn't catch the freeze, Tanner catches it first, and looks like he's walking all around him, sliding around the, the ice rink, as I, as I used to say. 25% um, spec has now been achieved, both players have 30, which means they've both got a spec left. Yar has his last chance now to actually come back, and if he catches this uh, VLS spec on the right prayer, he could potentially win it, but Tanner... Just not I, even going I, for the best. I think, I think not Tanner's got it. it. If, if he didn't He's hate Tanner enough it. at high school, he does now. Respect from GG, there oh, it is. So he is a GG member. That was a, a really, fight. really nice fight from the two of them. And um, yeah. I was told some really inf interesting information, actually. GG, uh, yeah, this, the, the new clan that's come around, used to be a solo alliance. Um, they actually recruited an elite tribrid called Rami, I was told, who is equal in skill to 1013 and Inya. He's one, one of their secret weapons. Ooh. So this might be the guy they're talking about. They've geared up, they've fed the whole week through. Doesn't play Devil Mode usually, but he's come out, again, like I said before, he comes out of the midst, and out of nowhere, new you know, champions arise that we get to see <laughs> and uh, see that their true potential. Next fight, we have Mika versus Mank, the content creator Mammoth of DMM. Go. Both these guys, you know, swaying out all week. Like I said before, Mika's been doing an absolute fantastic job at daily videos on YouTube. Check those out if you're not already. And Mank has been streaming PK, like you said before, Ben, uh, the entire week up until this moment. So it's a, it's a very exciting fighting fight to be had. Looks like we're going to be uh, starting very soon in the next eight seconds. In fact, who is going to take home a guaranteed $1,000? The winner of this fight is going to, but which one will it be? Oh, Mank gets that free straight away, steps under beautifully despite Mika trying to go for the VLS swing and then steps under with the plant for another one. But Mank keeps Premier up. He yep. knows that Mika has those seeds, like we said before. No gardening in my territory. He's going to go all the way through to the final, <laughs> he hopes. And now uh, Mank still have a lot of spec left as well. Are still, you know, opting for that that render self mechanic we talked about before that mm -hmm. Max really been practicing for for many months and if not like a year plus now. And, and there's really a, go down to a two. There's another big difference in strategies here. You can mm -hmm. see Mika like oh many. that wasn't the right prey. Actually, maybe you could have killed Max there. Ooh, he is using a lot of special attacks here. Mank off Mika's he's all of them actually. I see that Mank does tend to to as. Ian suggested earlier he does tend to keep himself on those lower HPs whenever he can. No, I think it's just a case of calculating whether or not it's possible that he's able to die in that yeah, moment. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyways, as I was saying, so Mika has his, his inventory switches at the top left, his gear switches. Mengt keeps his towards the bottom. Mengt obviously also using the render self strategy, but uh, Mengt has his, his tank body at the bottom right, which he doesn't touch. Mika hasn't bothered bringing any. Mika's instead brought the seeds. Just a couple little interesting things that could um, make the difference in this fight. Yeah, it looks like gear-wise as well, actually, you know, the, the double armor deal against Mika. Mika's going to have a really hard time right now catching those freezes, which are mm -hmm. really imperative to, to create that momentum and getting those step-unders. And that's where Manx really uh, succeeds very well in these tournaments. If he gets that freeze and he starts to walk underneath you and, and just, like, step out sideways and such diagonally where you can't melee him, that's where he has a field day, and that's where he starts to get that, that advantage. But right now, Manx looking like he's actually got quite a lot of feel on the floor. Uh, a decent spec from him here, but through prayer, Mika keeps praying man up. You know, both times, really, really good job there as well. Both players now not having any spec. Actually, Mika's actually just got another one, just before Mankta's got his. So uh, if Mika can catch his next freeze, which he has, and I uh, guess unfrozen first, then he might be having an opportunity to be able to throw that VLS spec into the right prayer and come back quite a bit right now. Mika doing so, so well. And we know he's good. We saw him at the All-Stars. Um, he's done well in the betas in the past as well, but he's never done as well in an actual dead man tournament as Mankta, of course. Manked has four sharks to his name. He's going to be wanting. To, he's going to be wanting to use those blood barrages as much as he possibly can. Goes in for the VLS. He also has a spec left. Mika's building up on his second. 
It's like Mika now actually getting the freeze on Manx, but yep. Manx without the, mis the Miffle seeds can't move, and even if he could, the seeds are already down on the floor, so it's well, not they're like they're having a little like, you know, in game, so nice. Not much you chilling, <laughs> chilling. Oh, they're just having a good time. So I think the reason for that is that obviously Mika wants to try and get his stats up as high as he can again, and uh, report and all that kind of stuff, and back into the fight, that's enough chit chat. And Adima Mika now with a beautiful VLS, but Manx just wow. gets the Prey Melee on in time, and catches Straight the freeze as well. Barrage as well, so which again, is insane to before, see. Like I said before, like, when Manx gets these freezes, it starts to become like... Manx with a couple stat bashes. He's trying to He's trying to pick up his inventory Three of food. Staff Look yeah. at his inventory now. He has so Mank left food fish. on the floor. He wants to pick that up. It looked like Mika had basically kept Mank on par in terms of supplies, but Mank, as Mank has been doing this entire tournament, has been decimating his opponents, taken a lot of in items into his inventory, yeah. which means he's left a lot of food on the floor. And now it looks like all of a sudden it's it's an uphill battle here from Mika, and it yeah. looked. It could be that Mank is the one to take at home a guaranteed thousand dollars. I think it's, again, it comes down to the fact that he got that DD underneath. And once he starts to get those DDs, yep. it's so hard to fight the render self. Another thing to mention here, I don't think we've, we've talked about it before. If Mank does win this round, oh, it's a big ball, by the way, into a big VLS, but the Prey Melee's on, so I think it's a big little regardless. VLS. A big little, uh, I was like, yeah. oh, 26, <laughs> that's pretty big. Oh, on the right wow. side, 27 could have carried him there. I'm going to say, if Mank wins this, we have three Blazers in the semi finals. Which is pretty insane. Which is huge, yeah. Well, that's the, pretty the insane. Small, but that's not, numbers as well. That's not too inconsistent with the last few uh, Deadman tournaments. Blazers have been doing so, so well. They keep their numbers small, but they're all very, very good. Yeah. And Mika right now down to it's no, 10 HP. No food, just a few little bits of prayer left. I don't think there's any chance unless Mika suddenly gets some spec left and Mank decides to just take so off. So keeping an eye on this. We there we go, Mank's gone through. Pay attention, Mank has won that with three food remaining, which means he's going to drop those to the floor, have them extra for the next fight. Um, if, if you weren't following how they get their food back during the fight, what's happening is they're winning their fights with extra food. They then get their typical, whatever it is, I believe 14 sharks or so. And what's happening is they've got a full inventory of food and a few inventory of switches, sorry, and every single round everyone gets the same amount of food, whether that's 14 sharks or yeah, 15 yeah. or whatever. If they haven't got enough space in the inventory, it drops the floor right underneath them. So later in the fight, they can go up. Yeah, ah, I thought they were saving them on for no, the No, you can't save them for the next round. It's just the fact that he doesn't have space because he's got so many crazy switches because he's quick on the sticks of the, the clicks that's why he's able to uh, you Actually, know get some extra well ones yeah so we've got Mank going through um who else have we got going through well we know Mika's out I believe we have Tanner from GG yep Tanner went through so he's the last uh, uh, and Rot's gone yeah, the Rot's supposed Rot. I mean, obviously, we, we're not 100% accurate or, whether, or, or certain whether those but are for, players. For all we know, those three players might be in Rot, but they've somehow snuck their way into Blazers to get free. Uh, yeah, they could be I very there. much doubt it, but <laughs> it, it, it could happen. Thing. But we are now down to the last four players. Which means they're all getting money. So yeah. again, guys, it's $20,000 to the first place, 10000 to the second, third and fourth get $1,000 yep. each. And the top 16 who have just died, they'll get a year's worth of membership. So there you go. And we're ready to go. All right. Straight Let's do into it. it. Here we go. I love this. No downtime. Straight into the next fight. Here we have Mr. H himself against JD. Both Let's have places. a look at what uh, Mr. H's switches are going to be like in this fight. Is he going to be as uh, a formidable opponent as he was in the previous round that we managed to watch? Both have imbued heart. Bo well, actually, both two, in fact, have full armor deal as well. They are absolutely stacked. I think the only difference being that H has the DFS, whereas JD has the, uh, has the ward here. And now it's a, uh, it's a hybrid fight versus a tribe related to before. JD opting to, to wield that staff in between hits as best he can, and H understanding he's against a tribe, uh, against a tank, sorry. He needs to be able to do his step unders to try and mitigate the damage taken in by him as well. And um, that, that full armor deal, though, catching that freeze, wow. I'm surprised he's catching it, to be honest, but catching that freeze is so difficult and so RNG based. He does have a very strong uh, magic setup. He's got the imbued heart as well, he's got the mage's book. I see what you're saying now, Ian, about plenty of switches H has. He's got the, the double armor deal, the double tank body, the double arums obviously switch. Um, he, has three, he, has three, he has three so different much. shields switches. He has the Mage's Book, the Defender, and the DFA. You don't need the Defender, really. Like, it helps for the VLS. It's got a bit more accuracy on it. But, I mean, it's just, <laughs> he's just doing it because he can, pretty much, right now. <laughs> but and, can um, he, though? Cause, well, I think well, the biggest disadvantage right. that H is here is he's being able to pull out a lot of damage, which has obviously been in favor. But the thing that's keeping JD in this fight, from what I've been able to gather in this, the last few seconds, is that... Whenever H takes that risk of trying to get the freeze and putting himself into the, the magic gear, his defenses are dropped, 
the bolts have been hit in 20s plus. Um, and that's really where this difference is being bridged between the two of them. Otherwise, you know, if, if, if H was able to catch every freeze instantly and never splash, I don't think JD would, uh, would even still be left in this fight anymore. Yeah. But JD's now picking up some of the remaining shots he's got. He has five food remaining and a brew. Whereas H, if he's picking up food, like his, yeah, exactly. Same situation oh, wow. again, though. Not able to get the freezes, opting to try and force out that freeze with the magic gear on rather than the defensive gear, and, and he's paying the price. I mean, even when you hit with a VLS on, uh, on Prey Melee, if they've got robes on, you can still hit those 30s, which yeah. make a big difference, and they add up over time. Looking at spec right now, though, H does have two special attacks at the ready, primed. So going for the freeze, keeping his opponents in the same position, so he just has a Prey range the entire time. And that's really where the attack tank... Um, meta really falls down because when you've only got a range switch and you're frozen in place constantly if you're unlucky enough to be frozen it can be so difficult to come back yeah. 22 through the prey mage just going for anything he can because he knows he's gonna be frozen again in a second and hoping he can catch those hits off prayer but h doing a fantastic job of you know keeping prey melee up the whole time waiting for that freeze before switching back to range prey opting for a few blood rogers too to maximize his his dps but also you know healing up a little bit too and it's coming down to the wire right now for h um, he still has one spec almost coming up soon, and JD has a spec as well. So he's got to be very careful that Prey Melee again. If he gets hit by that, that VLS spec, it's going to be very hard at this point in the game to, uh, to come back from it. If you were in this position now, um, oh, Ian, there it is. knowing that you're up against a ranged tank, knowing you've got hybrid, and, and probably assuming that your opponent has a very similar level of food, would you opt to just try and, uh, and out RNG them in the ranged tank setup, no, you, you or would you still tick with the, the hybrid? You need that the freeze. Tribrid. You need that freeze pretty much. Cause if you have that freeze, you mitigate the damage coming in. But I think it was too little, too late. I saw a massive 38 VLS through Prey Melee from JD. That and uh, the Vengeance, vengeance as, well, as well was ticking away at him. Looks like JD's got 70 HP right now. Wow, a really nice bolt though. Mind. Five. H coming in with the redemption as well. Both players now out That's of food. It change. could just be the next hit. No way. Th this could freeze, actually happen. Freeze. On double armor deal, it's gonna be very hard to catch here. Plus, he's using redemption with no prep. Oh! He catches no the way. freeze. No way. He's got one HP left. What oh, the my hell? Oh, my goodness. H. H. That was actually ridiculous. That was absolutely like insane. That. And fair what play to him as well. I mean, you can only get those comebacks when you're in tribal gear. Wow. So, uh, so just as you said, him. yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for giving the right information because he definitely <laughs> chose that, that perfect tactic yep. to go ahead. I mean, it was extremely risky, but that was probably the closest fight that we've mm -hmm. ever seen. We played that perfectly. And um, kudos to him for going through. Unfortunately, the range tank not able to. And um, I believe H was from Blazers as well. So one of the Blazers members, hopefully, potentially, um, hopefully in terms of like if we, we're sure that it's a Blazer <laughs> member, I'm try. no bias here. Yeah. Um, one yeah. of them has got a guaranteed $10,000. Guaranteed $10,000 at least, yeah. like take, yeah. home, take home for his team. And now we have DNN Mant versus Tanner from HS. Apparently, both these guys aren't in the same team. Obviously, Mant's representing Blazers and Tanner representing GG. It might be the guy that I was talking about before, the secret weapon they told me about, or maybe it's someone that snuck their way in, or a, a GG member as well. Who knows? Um, this is going to be a hard fight for Mank, to say the least. All right, guys. We're ready to get into the next fight. Let's do it. Mank versus Tanner. We've got Blazers versus GG. Very, very similar setups. Uh, what are the differences? What can we see here? Dragon Crossbow, ACB? I yes, so. that's ACB's a big difference. Shit, yeah, it's, a big it's got a little bit more uh, range uh, accuracy and attack, and it's no extra max hits, though, I don't believe. So. Mank has the Mithril Seeds as well, which he obviously picked up from Mika. Yep. Um, didn't have those previously. We'll see if he has uh, opportunity to utilize those at all during this fight. Uh, Manx started off getting frozen by Tanner, but has now repaid the favor to Tanner and frozen him, which means that Manx will get unfrozen a little bit sooner, oh, going straight in with the VLS. Job. It was a perfect timing. Unfortunately, oh, the hit again. wasn't there, though. Um, Sorry, but both of those hits were off prayer, Yeah, they were, they, were, they were ideal, just RNG, not in the favor of Manx yeah. at the moment. Same that, though, he did, like you said before, he had a fantastic job of, even though he's caught in the first freeze, he still kept calm yep. and actually managed to do more DPS than his opponent it's did. It's that Mozart, I'm telling you. And now... Tanner oh. with his special attacks. He's going to want to get rid of those. There he goes. He's using the first one with fault in the blood, blood barrage, rather. He's doing well. He's taking some serious damage. There's serious money on the line. I know I've said this, but again, he's, he's doing well to keep himself composed. He's not shaking. This you fight can tell is, his clicks. He knows what he's doing. This fight is between one and $10,000, pretty much. So yeah. everything is on the line for these guys right now. And Tanner trying to stay calm and, you know, keep his cool. Trying to move into the, uh, the tank here in between every single freeze. Managed to catch Manx, even in the full armor deal, quite way behind. Uh, Manx right now looking, looking pretty calm as well. 103 HP, just restored his stats up. Went for the Rage Pot again. He's going for the Super Combat 2 as soon as he's unfrozen, I imagine. He only has 10% spec, though. Tanner does have almost two special attacks, which can uh, obviously throw the fight in his favor as well. If Manx manages to hit him off prayer. Opting to hold on to as well his final doses of the Super Combat mm -hmm. and the Range Potions. So there may be a point here, just for the next few, uh, few seconds, where Manx actually has a bit higher in terms of those boosted stats. But we'll probably see that shift as Tanner then opts to take those. 
He, there, is an, there is a tactic that's utilized by high level players, or a lot of PKs in general, which is kind of like animation storm or hiding, where when you sip a potion, it doesn't actually show what your character is doing because the animation of the potion will override. So you'll probably see them utilize that to, uh, to get in extra hits on the right prayer. I'm seeing some Manx. huge blood barrages yes. from Tanner at the moment as well. 48, 48 on the right prayer on Manx. Yeah, Tanner's going absolutely ham right now. He's come back really well. His next freeze is going to be paramount to him. Can he catch it while well, Manx is in the full armor deal? He does manage to catch it. Can he get the step under? Gets off prayer as well. Beautiful play from Tanner, not wasting any game ticks there either. And uh, now it comes down to a one shark versus one shark, unless they have more food on the floor. But a 38 ball was that, I believe, from Manx. I think, but that still. was huge. Now he's trying to catch the freeze as well. Can he catch it? He can as well on the armor deal. There's some huge freezes coming in. Off prayer as well. It's coming down to the wire right now. Manx has that brood dose. He doesn't want to use it there. Once he uses that brood dose, he's going to be brewed down, which means he doesn't have the super range and the, uh, the super combat effects anymore. Mango for spec 13. Could have KO'd him right there. Tanner has 19 hit points. Coming down to the wire, but he can still come back. Tanner doesn't have has one special attack as well. He's waiting. He's waiting for Manx to change his prey melee off, so he's able to go for the BLS. There but it is. Yeah, he's there shot it is. down. 26. Wow. Well he, was, he was from GG. Tanner was yep. actually a GG member, so that was uh, that correct was information. Well so, that yeah. was a great fight. Mm. Very, very nice fight. Both very respectful as well. So. Yep. Very small detail. Um, just noticed a couple times in that fight where Manx could have used the Mithril Seeds, and but he just didn't. didn't bother. No, uh, I think that may be, you know, uh, credit to the fact that he's using uh, Render Self method and he's very comfortable with that, so maybe he knows what his opponent's doing, and it yep. gives him a chance to just kind of like think about what he's going to do next rather than Mithril Seeding, potentially having the wrong gear on, maybe not having the right prayer, or maybe not even being prepared to then attack his opponent back. So um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm, I'm seriously starting to think here with this Render Self strategy, um, winning a Dead Man tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and then winning the All-Stars and then doing so well here and all these things. Why isn't anybody else picking up on this? It obviously, it takes a while to get, to get used to, but when you are render self and, and you, can't, um, you can't see yourself, you can see your opponent standing on you, you can see what, what gear he's using, as you said. You can see, you can, you know, mm -hmm. preempt his attacks and prepare for them. Um, it's a serious yeah. advantage if I've, you can I've get I've been here the last few months, definitely. As people have been trying to learn the meta, yeah. but uh, Mank has just, you know, been practicing for so much longer than everyone else, yeah. so he's had the, a few months advantage at the very least. I think it's, it's one of those things where with a lot of games, and RuneScape especially, a lot of stuff comes down to muscle memory. And yeah. now whilst using render self doesn't change where you're clicking in the game, it definitely changes your overall kind of like experience. So if you've played RuneScape for the last six years and you've always relied on knowing the gear that you have on based on looking at your character, for example, yeah. or knowing your prayer or your HP by looking at the bars and suddenly they're not there and you can't see where you're standing, then th those are all little things that, that add up into this bigger problem and that's why it's so difficult to learn how to actually utilize that effectively. But as Ian rightly pointed out, Manx has been using this pretty much ever since it was available and yep. learning how to, to really master it and he seems to be doing a really good job at it. It was really cool to see as well, uh, both Rot, who haven't played in many tournaments officially uh -huh. at least, and uh, had that massive lockdown on Luna. It clearly paid off, they had a member that went all the way to the top four, oh, yeah. which is uh, still money in their pockets, they can't be yep. uh, sad about that one. We also have GG2, who last time round in the rerun, I believe, it was Black Mirror, or the Crab Emoji guy, sorry, <laughs> Twitch chat, Soz. <laughs> but he, was, uh, he did really, really well, and he came top four, which you don't always see either. Um, so yeah, really, really cool for both those clans to come out here and, and make it that far, but two Blazers members yeah. in the final. Insane. Uh, guys, wow. are, are we ready? We are ready. So we have two Blazers members. We've got Manked versus H. Uh, both repping the same clan, of course, gonna be, both going to be friends. There's $20,000 to first, oh, there's $10,000 to second. Let's get into the finals of the Dead Man Summer Finale. Not only that, but the last Dead Man that we, as we currently know it as well. Yep. What a moment this is. Piece of RuneScape history being experienced right here, ladies and gentlemen. I was wondering if they go for any like crazy tactics, for example, you know, taking off all their armor or something fun for the viewer spectacle, but they're, they're going for pride right now and uh, going to show who is the best PKer in their team. Max catching that first free, stepping under H, and hitting a 41 bolt was that. That was huge. That was an insane huge advantage. special. I know you really love those opal bolt specials. Oh, man. It's, it makes it worth Diamond while, bolt know. special, sorry. It makes it worth while doing DS2, and that's what their, their huge strategy was, Blazers, the whole way through, was uh, locking it down with eight players. I saw some solo missions video, they took down another player with like max gear. A Huge BLS as well, 33 on the right prayer. Could have been bigger, still not bad for H. He's trying to catch his freeze now. They play advantage. so similarly. Their, their moves are move for move. <laughs> These guys have obviously practiced it, it, a it's lot It's almost together. as well the damage exchanges have been nearly identical as well. Really big hits. It was the difference between Manx's uh, range hit and H's mage hit, but they both had two good hits in a row. And uh, yeah, as you say, both similar in terms of play style as well. It's like they're well, a clone like, like I said before, before the, uh, the tournament started, I'm sure you guys have been in team speak together with different players in the dual arena, practicing it out in the tournament worlds as well, while well, those were still up. So these guys know each other's play style, they know how to yeah. PK. 
Um, it's the a fact Mike is, is typing with Mika in that fight there, in, this, in I believe it was the quarters um, back there. It just shows he's so he's so calm. Yeah, he's obviously same with Mika, this. man. It was it was just like good. That being said, two huge hits against Manked here, two 30 pluses in a row, going to take quite a bit of his resources down. Um, H doing a really good job to stay on top of this fight at the moment. Yeah, one thing I don't notice Manked does as much as his opponents do is that is the uh, using the the Blood Barrage, because Blood Barrage, of course, heals a percentage of the damage dealt as well, so it can really help with his neck and neck fights. But Manked, of course, maybe because of his muscle memory, like we talked about before, having Ice Barrage in certain areas where he utilizes that a bit more, plus the max hits might help him for, for pure damage output. But H doing a fantastic job right now, catching Manked off prayer quite a bit, and uh, actually you know, pulling away in the lead quite, quite a fair bit too now. Both players utilize their bruise and such. But both of H's specs, I think, hit very low too. He's got one spec left. Manx almost has one as well. He does have a special attack as well. He's his next spec his is really interesting. For the, for the magic attacks. Yeah, of course. Well, the, the Torax Helm does give negative mage, mage bonus. So uh, every little helps in, in these fights, to be honest. Another big overall spell. Only a 22, actually. I saw the animation, of course. So I got a little bit excited, a bit prematurely. <laughs> very curious. They, they are diamond bolts, right? Not very, opal. very well. It's hmm? diamond bolts. No, right? they're opal bolts. They're opal bolts. Yeah. So I was right in the first place, and I corrected myself to make myself wrong. <laughs> Great, that's Amazing. such an Aiza moment. So, guys, just to, just to reiterate, if you're unfamiliar, Mengt has actually won a dead man tournament before. Truth be told, he came second place, and it was discovered that the first place winner of that tournament was actually Sorry. cheating overnight. He did a little bit of botting, so he was disqualified. Mengt took the win. This will make him the only ever dead man player to win two tournaments in a row if he ends up winning this. He'll also be the only uh, dead man player to ever come top two. Really, he's already there. So, a really, really impressive title. But again, this H guy coming out of nowhere, we have no idea who he is. We just know he's in this clan. Blazers, uh, a friend of Manked. Clearly, they fight very similarly. Um, quite even as well. Two food for Manked. Actually, yeah, four I mean, for H. Yeah, looking pretty good for H at the moment. Unless Manked has some food stored on the floor somewhere, um, he's going to need some really good hits to come out of uh, this fight. He'll have another, he has another special attack ready now. So, he's just waiting for that right moment to be able to utilize it. But until then, uh, we're just going to be able to see if a back and forth between mage and range. H isn't changing his gear. He's sitting in those robes. He's been sitting in the arms it's, for it's 10 almost seconds like, It's now. almost like he's letting Max win because maybe the team members have been like, you know what, let him win. He needs to take this one home. We trust Max and such. Give him the win. Uh, I think he's probably caving a little bit under the pressure. Uh, there's, there's a 10 grand difference in this No, there's, he's not caving that much. He's letting Max win, I think. I think Max is going to take this one home. I'm not trying to take anything away from Max, of course, in this final. But uh, H is just standing around right now doing a careful couple of switches, a couple of fakies, barraging with the wrong stuff on Max, sitting in full armor, still going for the VLS wax as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think I'm with in on this one. I, this fight doesn't look the same as the previous ones did. I have a feeling that H is, uh, he's either, <laughs> his batteries have ran out and uh, he's decided that he needs to have a nap mid fight or he's letting Max win. Know what? And there you have it. I'm going to say you're right. It looks like Max yeah. has won, regardless of the fact Max wins. The last ever, as we currently know it, Dead Man tournament. Amazing. That's amazing. Two victories. He won the yeah. uh, the, the All Stars event. Mm -hmm. He's won so much money from these tournaments. It pays to be good at old school, <laughs> doesn't yeah. it? Um, so there you have it, guys. That is the end of the Dead Man Summer Finale 2019. Just to reiterate, we saw Manked and Blazers doing so, so well. Manked going on to win it, um, as we just saw. And as, as Aiza just touched on, this is the last one as we know it. We're using this term lightly because um, Dead Man will come back, but it's going to come back better than well, ever, actually, different there, and stronger. There is one point to interrupt you on there, sorry. It's not that Dead Man, Dead Man isn't gone forever. Dead Man still exists. Don't forget that World 45 does exist, which is the permanent Dead Man world, which anyone with a membership can access. Uh, I, I believe that, like it was only a few months ago that there was a, a big round of changes that got added to the, the World 45 Dead Man. So we've got like the Grand Exchange. It's a lot more favourable now in terms of new players joining, with in terms of like a, uh, an immunity period, uh, XP rates, XP loss has been changed as well. So definitely go and check that out if you are interested in Dead Man. If you are interested in getting in, in, involved in PvP. Um, Guys, get yourselves prepared, for ready for when the next version of Deadman comes out in, yep. the, in the future because you've clearly seen what happens here. Anyone can win it and there's a potential for thousands of pounds to be won as well. Yeah, that's very well said. Um, I think I would be practicing in old school if I wanted to, mm -hmm. to participate in the next tournament. Um, looking at Deadman, historically, we know that it does best when we make these big changes. Yeah. So we started with things to make um, a, little bit, a little bit less detrimental when you died. You started to protect more stats, more items. But then we threw in the big changes. Then we threw in the, the 1v1 section of the, of the uh -huh. tournament. Then we threw in the PvP weapons and armors. Oh. And when those, th those changes started to come, and that's when Deadman really started to oh, shine. Yeah. So you can trust that when Deadman comes back, 
It'll probably be, it may be with a different name. I can't wait. Who knows, different face completely. You might not even recognize it as Dead Man, but it's going to be different mm -hmm. and it's going to be better. So there you have it, guys. I, I am so excited. It, it almost seems like I'm joking, but I'm not. But the one thing that I can't wait to give for a, for a real reason for me to get involved in in terms of content at the moment is PvP. It's an area that I haven't explored since pre-EOC RuneScape times and I'm just waiting for that right moment where it's all perfect. I've tried Deadman before, I've tried World 45. Um, I mean, it's not like a brand new experience for me anymore, but the next yeah. thing that comes up, you can guarantee I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be trying it out. Do you know it would be different involving a little bit of PvM? So Maybe, you, you like beat a your mixture. opponent in the, in the semi-finals, then you take on Zook. Then you go back and fight the other guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't bother with that then. I'll right. don't care. I mean, Bellis has got that one in the bag, <laughs> I think, from her. Oh, we have actually had uh, we have actually had official confirmation. Um, normally, at the end of the uh, the tournament, our uh, anti-cheating team will confirm the uh, the actual winner is legitimate, and it does turn out that Manked is well confirmed done. as the legitimate winner. So congratulations! We get a clapper in the chat, please. So guys, um, before we get into our final thoughts um, from Dead Man, uh, from starting out until this point, I'd like to mention again, we have to promote RuneFest. It's our yearly RuneScape convention. Um, join yourselves or join the, the other RuneScape players. Um, I believe it's October 4th and 5th. Tickets are on sale now. You can find the link in the description. Um, there it is on the screen. Early birds are unfortunately out. They do go quickly, but yeah, go ahead, get yourself a RuneFest ticket. Come say hi to us, we'll be there. No. Manx right. has a quick shout out as well. The last part of that message is... Yeah, so. Manx says thanks to everyone for feeding him, as the clan did, and Blazers, uh, his clan too. And also, hashtag GoofyGang, which I think are a group of his friends as well that helped him get this far. So I wonder if that includes Ruben, the goof. It must be. <laughs> Mr. Sasky, as <laughs> you know. Sasky. You know. All right, guys. Uh. So, final thoughts on Dead Man? It's been quite a journey. It really has, yeah. From, from when it first started off, I remember the first time I ever got involved in Dead Man from a, a non-player's perspective was back at RuneFest. Two weeks into my job, as, uh, when, I, when I was back working for Jagex as an employee, standing behind the stage, and I just thought, this, this thing is incredible, I want to be more involved. And then that finally led to me being able to give the opportunity to be able to cast alongside mm -hmm. great friends such as yourselves and, uh, and, and really professional people as well. It was, great experience but being able to see the different players just like evolve has been fantastic um so for, for me personally my final thoughts were dead man has meant so much more to me than than almost anything else at the moment because it's provided me a huge opportunity to be able to be where i am now be able to commentate it helps me be able to continue streaming as well outside of uh outside of dead man and doing commentary and events like this and it's also brought me um, a huge amount of, uh, of, of new people to watch on Twitch as well as YouTube and I've never really watched YouTube that much until the last two years and that was really because I started watching Dead Man strategy videos and then it just kind of like snowballed from there yeah. and now I never sleep so yeah I, yeah. Uh, I think Dead Man um, thinking back to, to my most memorable times in RuneScape come back to things like your first time fighting Jad Mm -hmm. Your first time trying Dead Man. It's one of those things. It's one of those things that kind of brings you outside of your com comfort box. Y you get a little bit scared. Uh, you're walking from a bank to another bank. You could die. You could lose hours and hours and hours of progress. Yeah. Um, and it's been something completely different from anything we've ever done in old school. It's been amazing to watch it grow and turn into what it did. We took it all around the world. We took it to a TwitchCon. We took it to a RuneFest. Um, yeah. yeah, it's been amazing. I, I couldn't be happier um, to, to look forward to the future and see what it's going to turn into. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing DMM since the first iteration. Um, I owe everything to you guys for inviting me to cast uh, tournament after tournament. You guys do so well. I think since 2014 now, I want to say a massive thank you to well, all the clans that always get in touch with me. I have loads of notes here just like sitting around. Um, I didn't manage to shout all them out, but you guys are what makes Demo Mode Demo Mode yeah. in a way as well. Yeah. I, d I just um, like to, to, just to really just uh, re like. Um, continue on from what you just mentioned there I really want to emphasize one thing I missed out is that without you guys the players without all of the dedicated people that play 20 hours a day seven days maybe throughout less, the entire maybe four tournament. Hours. yeah maybe four hours as well you know uh, right <laughs> <laughs> but to everyone it, whether you're whether you're a hardcore player in a clan whether you're a solo player whether you're just playing in the seasonals whether you are um, you know just actually playing the game and never speaking very vocal on Twitter submitting all of your feedback Without all of you guys, none of this would have ever have been possible. So massive thank you to all of you, the players, and everyone as well that tunes into the events. Twitch chat, you are very interesting for sure at most times, but you are also absolutely wonderful and brilliant. And uh, yeah, thank you for being with us. 
and I'll let you carry on, Ian. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I was, I was just going to say that, <laughs> like I said, um, I've been class, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> I've been class since 2014, 15 or something like that. It's been going on for like four plus years. Obviously, yeah. it needs to be to be shaped and to be something fresh and exciting again. But I've made so many memories, so many friends along playing demo mode and, and casting it and going to all these events for you guys. And like, I'm so, I'm honestly, like, I'm emotional about it because it has been a wild ride and it's crazy to see where it's where it's taken us all and um and i'm sad to see the saying goodbye for now and i just i hope it comes back and uh we will thank, come back. thank you basically thank we will you. come back all right guys um i'm gonna give i'm gonna ask for actually one last thank you um people who kind of go unmentioned the guys who run this show the guys who run the tournament thank you to the production team here at jagex as well as the jagex guys um, offering the cameras making the world go live doing all of these special things that they do so thank you to the people who actually make dead man happen Buffer in the chat. Come on. Okay. That said, guys, well, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.